Where do I start? When are people going to wake the fuck up? It's the system. You cannot play this way in the Premiership with every fucking game. It's too good. My man waits until we're 3-0 down again before he makes any fucking subs. What is wrong? And then we need to score goals and he takes Sun off. Why? I know he wasn't having the best of games, but he weren't getting the fucking ball either. If we need to score goals, why take off our main goal scorer? Someone tell me if he was fucking injured. Seriously, what the fuck was that? That whole team fell to shit after that first goal. How many times did we get caught out? Down the right flank because there's nobody there. Looks over, nobody on the left, because we've had to move over to the right-hand side, over to the left again. Or, with that fucking high press forward, straight over the top, straight down the middle, and Vicario on his third goal. What are you doing? How much time do you want to give a man? He's been great, but I don't care. That was terrible. Udoji, missing. Porro. Van der Ven, not a good game at all. Probably his worst game we've seen for it. Probably the worst he's played. Romero, where was he for any of the goals? Nowhere. Benton Kaur, useless. Basuma, somebody get that prick off the fucking pitch quicker. Madison, he tried. I'll give him that. So did Johnson. Werner, people keep telling me, buy Timo Werner. Isn't that good enough not to buy Timo Werner? He didn't even try and head the ball. He could have tried and controlled the ball. And he still puts it over the fucking net. But yeah, we're happy with, if we get Timo Werner, yeah? 
Well, you keep being happy with, pe with us buying people like that. That is what you're going to get. And without a plan B, that is what fucking happens, mate. You cannot do this against teams that are that quick. When you've got someone like Isaac running down the middle, Gordon down the right-hand side, you're going to get opened up. What was it, the second or third goal? Everyone was in their half. Not even Van der Ven could catch him. But no, it's not the system. It's not the system. Of course not. Well done, Ange. Credit where it's due, yeah? Fourth place, fifth place, wherever we fucking are now. He's done well. But, mate, wake up. You have to adapt. We could get all the players we want next season. We are not going to get world-class players that can play this way against every bloody team. The premiership is too good. But people get offended when you slate a player because he's been shit. People get the ump when you tell Ange, you fucked up, mate. Big time. My man might as well have been standing on the side of the pitch, smoking a fucking joint, having a beer. 3-0. And then he makes three subs. What's the point? You're done. You're dusted. Oh, for fuck's sake. No, I am pissed off with this. And everyone keeps, a lot of people keep saying, it ain't the manager. Give him a season. I get it. We need time to get the players we want. He hasn't got all the players we want. But out and out, every fucking game, same goals, time and time again. We can't defend from a corner. They're nearly getting free kicks from like 35 yards out. We know that Vicario's weak spot is he cannot muscle it out. And the defenders still don't defend him. Yes, you can blame the players for half of this shit. I get it. Yes, you can. They was all crap. But Ange, wake the fuck up, mate. This is the Premier League. This ain't fucking Scotland. People take offence to me saying that. Bollocks. Most people on here can't even name the 10 teams in the Scottish League. He done well to get the treble with Celtic. But who else did he have to challenge him? Rangers. That's it. That's the Scottish League. Yeah, every time he went into the Premier League and played like that, he got torn a new arsehole like we just did there. All the players in him going to be walking off like fucking John Wayne. How many times do we have to get shafted the same way before he wakes up and realises you cannot play this way against every team? Certain teams, we will get away with it. Other games that maybe we shouldn't play like that, we'll have the bit of luck like we've had. But when you are playing with a team that fast on the side and they had half their team fucking missing, you're going to get done. That should have shown after the first goal. Okay, they're catching us on the pace because they'd already caught us over a couple of times. Sit back five yards, people. Maybe even come back 10 yards. Let the game calm down. Then go all out attack again. No, just play the same fucking way all the time. Yeah, it's just me being toxic, is it? Are people starting to see this? It ain't working all the time. Plan B, mate. Or even just fucking tweak a little bit in the game. Change a little bit. No. And then he went, oh, fuck, we're 3-0 down now. I'll make some changes. I'll make some subs. We're, we're fucked. Fucking idiot, mate. Yes, he's been good. But when you're good, you get credit. When you're bad, you get told. And that was fucking terrible. That was worse than Fulham. You'd have thought he'd learn after Fulham, three subs at 3-0 down. No, he should have made subs at half-time. At least one of the midfielders should have come off. No. Second goal. Mate, make some changes. Okay, wait till half time. No. Nope. And then we still play the same way. And we go 3-0 down and three subs. And he's...
as people can tell, I'm a bit pissed off. Right. Forgive me if my reading's going to be a bit bad at the moment, because fuming. I'm just going to go through a couple of people on the talk here. Breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. That's what they say. Fucking idiot! Kelvin, how you doing, mate? Stupid question, maybe. But either way, good afternoon. Well, shit afternoon. But either way, hope all's cool for you, mate. Time for Ange to go. No plan B. And he's not going to get the support he needs for the type of quality he needs and the play style of consistently. Right, I'll agree for everything with that, but he's not time for Ange to go. And just done well. For his first season, yes, I get it. The man's never had a big job. This is his first big job. Premiership. First big job. But, mate, we're nine months into it. But what are we on now? 32 games? Wake up. But, no, not Angie out. Not yet. We will judge this at the end or halfway through next season. But the thing that scares me is he says, I ain't changing my way for nobody. Just like Conte. So if he ain't going to change his fucking way, mate, you could have the best team, one of the best defences out there I have ever watched in my life was AC Milan. Paolo Maldini, Nesta, Yapstam, Cafu. As good as the defence will ever be. Play that fucking way, you're still going to concede goals. And, we, and he talks about we want to win the table. All right. We might get, we can get cups with that sort of style. But you cannot say you want to win a league and concede 60 plus goals a season. People saying, yeah, but we haven't conceded as many as last season. Look at the defence we had last season. When are people going to get this? It's the system. It's the way he plays. You can't do it against a fast team. No, he hasn't been sussed out at all, has he? That is why we concede the same fucking goals every fucking time. Every game. At least one or two of the goals are exactly the same as the path blood of 20. But it's not the system. It's me or Alan being fucking toxic, isn't it? Fucking prick. Mark Cook, how you doing, mate? Do you know what? Here you go, mate. I know you've said you wanted to come on a few times. What I would do, do you know what? Anybody who wants to come on here and dispute what I'm saying here, I dare you. Come on here. Here's the link for anybody and everybody. No, I won't have 20 people on there, but I will have a few on there. If you want. There's the link. Come on and say your bit. But somebody challenged me against this system. Yes, the player's fucked up, but it is the system. Right, Charlie, I can see you sitting in the background, mate. You're going to have to give me five minutes to read a couple of these out. Sorry, mate, I didn't even read, I didn't even read your thing out, Mark. Sorry, sorry, fella. All right, big up, Dan. Let's have it and sort out this shit show between us. I've sent you the link, fella. Come on. Adrian, if you're out there, mate, get your ass on here. Mr. Box Office, whoever. Do you know what? Get Mickey fucking Mouse on here. I don't care. Right. Andreas, I ain't going to try and even pronounce your second name, mate. I'll probably bite my tongue off in the process at the fucking moment. And out for me. We are going to be humiliated by City and Arsenal. I said this on Alan's show. We have got Arsenal coming up. We have got City coming up. Arsenal are going to have a field day with that. Yes, I know things change in the North London derby. Yes, they do. But we play that high with that style of play. Stacker is going to have a fucking field day. Right, I've got two people sitting on the side there. Like I say, give me five minutes and I'll bring you on. All right, Daryl Denton. But again, Andreas, it's not Ange out yet. <clears throat> not yet. He's still got another six months for me. But when he says he ain't going to change... Different season, different staff, same debates, same club, DNA, when will it end? This one ain't even the DNA. It's the style of play. 
I'm also sick of the absolute dribble he comes out with when interviewed. Mate, he's just the same as Conte. He's setting his way on what he says. He just says it in a better way. But people giving him all the chances on the planet, which I can understand, just because he plays attacking football. I could have won this fan base over. Kick the ball forward. There you go. 90% you love me off as a manager. But I've never managed a fucking team in my life. All right, come on. I'm going to bring these two on and I'm going to carry on reading out the side. So, here we go. Charlie, good afternoon, mate. I'll be with you in a minute. Other fella that's come on, James Watt, when you show your face on there, mate, I'll bring you on here as well. Like I say, you're going to have to give me another five minutes because I've got a lot to catch up on here. I ain't going to be able to read everybody out. Right. Dan, what do you think about Son as our captain? The guy the guy is in front of the London fashion show, <laughs> pictured with Cheerwell, looking like someone off the village people. If you Google it, you'll get what I'm saying. Well, London fashion show. <laughs> You're going to have to pictured turn with Cheerwell, looking like someone off the village people. If... You're going to have to turn your YouTube off. There you go. Oh. Right, I'll be with you in a minute. I haven't met you before. James, I'll be with you in a minute, fella. That's fine, mate. Tommy Mitchell, how are we doing, bruv? I hope all's good. A lot of love, Char. He's the one who started right. up and everything. James, That's fine, mate. Right, playing St. Miriam, Tokyo Angels and Sydney Warriors week in, week out. Doesn't prepare you for the Prem. We've been fortunate 90% of games that we've won. Mate, you're right. You said this at the start. You said this from day one. Samuel, that's my little brother-in-law. How are you doing, mate? Hope you're enjoying it in the back garden with the wife do, doing the gardening. Love you a bit. Tekken. Imagine Ledley King, Perriman per Roberts rocking up these events back in the day. Mate, you could have the best defence on the fucking planet out there. It ain't going to work against every team. Tom Packer, how are we doing? Big up, everyone. Can't wait for the North London derby. I fucking can. Right, Tommy, again, mate, what are you saying here? Don't want Ange out. I want to prove to some of the deluded fans living in a cloud cuckoo land that even a decent, decent, start again, that even after a decent season, Levy won't support him. We've got our Spurs back. Fuck off. Two, right, mate. It's the fucking system. Right. I'll go with you first, James. Never seen you on here before, mate. Yeah. Like you come on, take it you was on the talk. Yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> mate, I'm just fucking fed up with it. Oh, it's every fucking season, though. Do you know what I mean? It's not even like, oh, we have one bad season. It's just the same crap. And then we buy average players like Tino Werner. He was crap today. And, and then Vita gets in good positions. But, like, what was he doing for that first one? Do you know what I mean? Just, like, he's awful. And everybody defends him. Do you know what I mean? I said go and get a proper left winger. Go and get a striker as well. But no one listens. Everybody said, and then when you say it, you're negative. Do you know what I mean? Or you're positive. Or, or you're toxic, whatever else. Then I should have gone for the header for that ball. Exactly. Right. Firstly, I didn't even want Ange. I said this from the start. No, I've got no problem with Ange in the aspect of I think he can get us a cup or something, yeah? But he needs to wake up and smell the fucking coffee. You can't keep playing this way in the Premiership every game. You need a plan B. Right, I'm going to cut yeah. you short there for a sec so Charlie can say his bit. Yeah. Go on, mate, go for it. You know what? Everything I've said about Werner has just been disproven in this match. I feel like I've defended him on bits, but this just shows us how crappy he actually is. And... Now I've just changed my mind. I don't want him anymore. This just, the chance he missed, the balls he gave, he should have scored twice. We should have been 1-0 up. We should have we have been 2-2 at halftime. But because when I was playing so crap, we were 2-0 down. And didn't make any uh, any changes. It just feels like Werner lost us that game. And that sounds harsh. But that's how I feel about it this game. Werner did lose us the first half and the game, I feel like. That's for me. He did not lose us that game. That whole team lost the game. Uh, Vicario well, I mean, was like, with, with scoring. to blame for the first... Yeah, with scoring, I'll go with that. But Vicario was probably his worst game I've seen. I mean, how much time do you want to give someone in front of you? He should have at least come out to him. So, right. Going to go into a couple on the side. 
Bertie Hotspur, mm. and that's all I need to say. Yeah, I totally agree. Dale Denton. Ange had under 50% win ratio in the poor leagues. Are we surprised? Those first 10 games, yeah. I said to people, we have been lucky, but no. We are just lucky that most teams have got a shit attack at the moment. I think Ange can get us a cup. And, and if he decides to adapt and change his way in certain games, he hasn't got to change the whole style, but certain games, you got to come back 10 yards. Yeah. I mean, I say wake up and smell the coffee. Does he want a Red Bull as well? And the way he does it, it oh, mate, to wake up, he might as well need a bit of powder. I don't know. Wake up. Also, Mickey Van der Ben's hamstrings are going to get fucked again. That's what they are. You know what I mean? If he keeps playing like that. My mate he... who started this show said that from day, and I've been saying it for a while now. When you play with that much pace on your acceleration, your hamstrings are going to go. And how many yeah. times did he go? He's already had a rip. And sooner or later, he will get a complete tear. And he will never be the same again. Exactly. He's going to get damaged. And then you think if that's how we're playing when we got Van der Ven in there to come back and cover us like he actually did a couple of times, what are we going to do yeah. without him? Still sit in the halfway line. Yeah, like I know. People, yeah. It is the tactics that are doing this in games Hoy like this. Be fair, Hoybeer should have started, though. I, I wanted him to start. I don't like to see him. He needs to go. He's awful. He's just weak in the tackle, giving the ball away time and time again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm just fed up with it. I really am. It's just annoying. It's flaky. Who cares? But we've got hands. You know what I mean? Every game. That is the problem. If we was conceding goals from here, there and everywhere, do you know what? Go beat me 4-0. But two of the goals were exactly the same as the past 20. <laughs> I know. Be fair. Pochettino used to bring the defense. Back and we used to be all right on the pod because he used to get the fans right. And then we had, I know we had better players, a better attack, but he used to sort out the defense properly. Either way, but even Potch would adapt to certain games. Right, I've got to go for a couple of the talk, and Charlie, I'm going to come to you, mate. Right, Jacob. Yes, Tommy Boy, long time no see. Yep, top fella. Right, Jacob. How great it wouldn't sack Ange myself, but no plan B is ridiculous. This is what I keep saying, and people keep saying it's not a plan B you need. You need to play plan A better. Okay, plan A better can get you somewhere, but if plan A ain't working, you need a plan B on that pitch or change of tactics, change of style, make a couple of tweaks, whatever somebody wants to call it. You've got to adapt, not when you're 3-0 fucking down. And that one on there, my wife, Beth E. Tommy, nice to see you on here. Hello. My wife's gone out in the back garden <laughs> with my brother-in-law. He's only 12, so he didn't need to hear this whole abuse. I think the whole streak near me at the moment because the back doors and windows are open. <laughs> All right, Desiri, if I said your name right, apologise if I ain't, mate. The set-piece defending is atrocious. Rinse and repeat. It's just like everything else. Everybody can see that Vicario's weak spot is his aggression in the aspect of the power that he uses when he comes out. Apart from that, he's a brilliant keeper. But we know his weak spot. They know his weak spot. Defenders, defend him. Or even get, I don't care, get the fucking striker down there to defend him. Get someone to help him. If that was Pickford, he'd just grab the play and throw him out of the way. Get out of my face, you prick. Throw him out of the way. Keepers can do that. And get away with it. But it's not his style. I get it. So, Ange, tell the defenders, cover your goalkeeper. Or tell the midfielder, cover the goalkeeper. Mike, how we doing, mate? That's a good friend of mine I've known for over 20 years. He's a Liverpool supporter, I know. But he speaks sense every time we speak football. He ain't biased in that aspect. I hope you're doing well, mate. I bet you just enjoyed watching that. Right, Tom, defending set pieces is Sunday league quality. Yep, yeah. totally. And Samuel, hello again, bruv. Hope all's good. Jacob, I'm just trying to catch up on a couple of here because I'm so far behind. 
30% possession and they still kill us. Again, possession does not win you games. It can help. 600 passes, 1,000 passes. Give me 10,000 passes. It don't win you a game. Stats lie. You're 100% right, Jacob. Million percent. Big boss man. Sorry, Dan. But when so many players underperform, it's manager's fault. Awful management. It, it is down to the players as well. But you can see that most of them are just doing what they've been told to do. Whether they're doing it good or not, again, the manager should be saying, sit back a little bit. When we're blatantly yeah. getting caught on the flanks every fucking time, and he's telling them, invert it. When they they invert it, shit doesn't work. Like then the strip show. Inverted works on certain games. But, Charlie, I'm listening, mate. Give your opinion on the whole game. I'm going to I think the first 20 minutes, quiet. first 20 minutes we played well. And I we're thought, going to calm the language down now. Yeah, exactly. Not you. First 20 minutes, oh. I thought we could have... Seeing the first 20 minutes, I thought we'll, we, we've we got a good chance to win this game. Madison played well. Everyone was playing good. But once that first goal came in, once the, we conceded those chances, the whole team forgot how to play. It felt like they didn't know what to do. They all felt very unsure. And I don't know what happened after that, because after the first goal came in, we were all playing as if we, we didn't know what, what we were actually playing. And ball was not being played. We were all basically just playing backwards. There wasn't as much attacking. Um, the shots that we were shooting weren't as good. Son was having a howler of a game. Um, everyone was just not playing their best. And the only one that actually played well, I think, was James Madison for a change. Because the last couple of matches, he hasn't been that good. I think he was very creative this match. And he instigated all these chances. Johnson played all right too. But the rest was just, I don't know how I can say it. It's just, it wasn't good enough for me. So, what did you think about our defence overall? I mean... Horrible. What Was they at fault for it? Well, I think Mickey Van Ven made a couple of mistakes. Well, it's his worst match I've seen uh, this season, but he's allowed to have a bad match. You know, everyone has a bad match. It just sucks that it wasn't this game. He just wasn't playing as well. I thought he should have been subbed off for Dragosin because he was. He just he fell over. Those, those first two goals were because he couldn't get in front of the player or he slipped because Isaac, uh, uh, Isaac did like a... A fake move. So I think our defence wasn't that good. Udogi didn't play well. He wasn't defending. Romero couldn't seem to get at the ball. And Porro had an injury, which sucks because he is our best right back. So I don't know how we're going to do that. So I'm, I'm not. I'm not happy with the defence. How are you going to play inverted or even play with attacking wing backs when you got fuck when you got Emerson Royale there? Now you know what Emerson Royale. I think he gets a bit more stick sometimes. I don't think he's a bad right back defender. But that's it. How can you... He does not go forward. As soon as he looks at the halfway line, he starts panicking. If we play with Emerson Royale, we'll have to go to a free back because he ain't going to go forward. The only one that will go forward is your doggy. Yeah. This style we've got, I, I ain't going to go into it totally, but I think we play better with Conte style with this team we've got. It would work perfect with style, but I'm not going to go into that one. I've said that enough times. Look what my man here, John London, has just said. Hope you're doing well, mate. In through the nose, out through the mouth. We've now conceded twice as many goals as Arsenal. And we're meant to have a world-class defender. And definitely one up and coming who is gonna who has got more than potential to be world class, one of the best in the Premiership. But is it them? Yes, you can blame players for certain goals, or is it the style where they're sitting on the halfway line half the time, or where the flanks are so naked that they split up wide? Where the hell is Basuma to cover the middle? And we're open again. Yeah. But Suma shouldn't even be starting today. He was so no, awful. We need Paulinho. He'll be the perfect player to sit in that middle, mate. sweep out the play. Um, but, you know, but he's his mate, isn't he? And his best mate with Basuma. So, you know, get Nick and everything. Mate. I like Rui Diaz. I don't even like him. He's starting Adam? to understand now why Conte didn't play him. I was screaming last exactly. night. I loved him as a manager. Why weren't you playing him? And then we see the five, six games off him. We see how he can boss it. Up. But he's not a DM. He's a box-to-box. -box. He's where Saar plays. That's where he's best. So if you want a yeah, DM to ranker it, your best hope is either Hoiberg or Benton Kerr, who did it for four years 
at Juventus. No, you're not going to get the muscle in there, but Benton Cork can read a game and he can also play deep line playmaker as well. Yeah, I agree with that. that also, that attack is sick. I've got to read out. All... The side, then I'll come to you, James, and you can tell me what you think of the game as a whole. Right, Mark Cook, yeah. that was sh shocking today. No, sort of, I don't mean this offensive to you, mate, but no shit, Sherlock, to everybody. Yeah, that was fucking appalling. And like I say, I'll give my language, you two got to keep it down, otherwise, my show gets grilled for it. Right, Tommy, yes, Beth, <laughs> how it goes, and agreed, Dan Basuma got to be dropped ASAP. Yes, mate. He's been hopeless since first five since first five games. Do you know what? I don't know if everybody what there's a phrase for what we did today, and that that is it's an old phrase, foobard. If someone don't know what that means, it means fucked up beyond all recognition. Lewis, Dan, I agree to an extent, but look at the state of the front three. They are a bigger problem in the tactics for me. Right. I get what you're saying there, yeah. But the tactics are letting in goals every game. I know you can't necessarily blame the defenders because they're being doing what they're told to do. But it's the tactics on why we concede every game. What is that now? Two clean sheets in 25, 26 games? There's something wrong with these tactics. Big boss man. Dan, please call Son out. His weird fanboys are kidding themselves. Right, a lot of people know what I feel about Son. Outstanding player. Never been world-class for me, but one of the best the planet has ever seen on being able to finish on his left foot and right foot. No two ways about it, yeah? But for me, he's not captain material. Everyone to their own, I get it. Maybe I'm just not modern day. Modern day. Give me a Roy Keane. Give me a Patrick Vieira. Give me a Steven Gerrard. I'm a happy man. That is what I want my captain to be. John London, again, our players are way too overhyped by the fan base. It's Tottenham, mate. We're too accepting. I mean, how many arguments did I have with other people when they were saying, give Ndombele another chance? Get Eric Dyer. He'll, sort of, he'll get sorted out this time. Give him another go, another go. How many goals do you want? No, no, we give him another chance. Daryl Denton, that you, Tommy? Yes, it is, mate. That, that is Tom. Destiny 5, this ain't all. This ain't Angie's fault. We got punished for mistakes. And to be honest, the front three are not good enough again. Right. It's not all Angie's fault. But it is half Angie's fault. When he will not realise and wake up that you cannot play this in the premiership against every team. And then he makes no changes until we're 3-0 down. That is Angie's fault. Yes, players made mistakes as well. But how did we get caught out? Because they was up the other end of the bloody pitch. Who tells them to do that? Ange. So he has got to take shit for this as well. Go on, fella. I do feel like the players haven't completely like gone into Ange's system. I think if they all are like completely adjust to the system, we will play much better against these type of teams. Because seeing Basuma Bentacle. Wait. Seeing Basuma and Bentacle and all these players. They're not playing as good as Ange wants them to play. Even the attackers, they're not playing as wants them to play. I think if Ange gets his players in, the system will look way different. And playing against his high lines, we will be looking way more, way, way better and way more confident than we are doing now. How do you feel about that, James? Yeah, I agree. But I think that attack, like, yeah, needs to get better. We need like two. We need like three proper attackers. You know what I mean? Like Neto, like someone who can grab the ball, dribble, no, 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 and not no, do no, this no. shitty no. like passing by like Werner. And we, yeah, we will get better because if you have a like, if you have a better defence, no a better attack, sorry, then you will concede less. But the high line needs to sort out. I said this about five games ago to someone I know. You need he needs to bring it ten yards, just ten yards back. Like and then it'll be all sorted. It's just like ridiculous. It's just like it's just annoying as well. And then he go, and then he goes and speak, and then press conferences. Well, this is the way we are. And looks straight dead to the camera. So like, why would you not change? That's what the top and managers I'm trying to do. Quit smoking as well. I'm trying to quit smoking. Sorry, mate. Go on. <laughs> yeah, mate. It's ridiculous. He needs to start changing or go out, get out, and bring someone who can change. At least Pot used to change, mate. 
with what you just said <laughs> there, yeah, it's right and wrong. Anyone because on that? yeah, we get better better strikers, we get better wingers that can score at least 10, 12 a season than that. But we're still gonna concede the fucking goals. You cannot play in the premiership. You score three, we score four. You can't play like Newcastle used to. Not even man, you used to play like that. You no, I agree. Play. I said to bring it back. I said bring it back ten yards. Okay. And if you're gonna win a league and you wanna go for a league, you cannot concede sixty to sixty plus goals a season. By the way it's going at the moment, we're probably going to concede more goals now than we did last season when we had Eric Dyer, Sanchez and fucking Longley in defence. I'm not shouting at you. This is why I said like Conte could have done better with this team and Kane because he would have had the deep line defence like, but the good attack. Do you know what I mean? Leave it leave it Just leave that one at that. Don't, don't bring Conte into this now because otherwise I'll go back to my rant on it and I think everybody knows what I feel. Conte style now would be mint perfect for these players. But go on, keep saying what you were saying, mate. Yeah, and also, yeah, like we should have got a strike after Kane left. Like this is the problem. You can't buy you can't buy average balls. They won't score you goals. Werner will never get a 20 goal season because he's a donkey. No offense. But like he had a couple of opportunities. If that was Netter, that's going straight in the back of the net. If that's given his day. We need a player like him. Neto has got worse le worse legs than bloody Lo Celso, and he's nearly as bad as Cessignon. You know what? What you're saying there is right. Me and Charlie had this chat the other night, or afternoon, whatever it was. Werner yeah. actually is a good player, yeah? Very quick on his feet, gets into very good positions, even though he don't get the ball passed to him at times. Good at taking it round the player, fast. But when it gets in the box... Yeah, Mickey Mouse or Donald Duck could sco score off of them once. How can he be so close? I get the ball was coming right. What a cross though by Johnson and people know. I him. know. He yeah, he didn't even go for the header, or he's coming and over that much. He's a professional player. He could have stuck his left foot up, controlled it, and then just tried banging it. He put it over from about six yards, well, and people were saying, "Buy him." Now, me and Charlie agreed on this. I know, we, Charlie, yeah. if we go out and get ourselves a left winger, right winger, whatever, and then and ah. a DM, and then we go and get Werner as that backup, not as one to challenge for the place, but when we need him for a game or two. You know what? I can yeah. live with that. Or even if we go and get an out and out striker, get that DM we need. Right winger who can cross it consistently so him and Johnson can fight for it. Stick some back out on the left. You'll still get 10, 12 goals out of him. Yeah, I can deal with Werner then. But if we go and get Werner, don't get that fucking striker. Yeah. Angie's the one who stated, no player comes into this team unless I want them. In. Then he's on his head as far as I'm Oops, concerned. Up. Maybe he's just saying what he had to say to keep Levy happy. I don't know. I don't care. I only rant about what the manager says. I only have players in the team that I want and I ain't changing for nobody. Well, I'm sorry. I'm starting to get a bit paranoid yeah. now. Right, yeah, I am. When he's bringing players like Tino Werner. Not, you know. What's what? your thoughts on Gimenez, by the way? For for, Jan for January, yeah. I don't think Timo Werner was a bad call. Oh, he, he but there's so many better hand. options out there. Yeah, but, uh, hang on a sec, yeah. For January, I don't think it was a bad call. Why? Because for me, he plays exactly the same way Son does, and he does fit into Angie's system. Only difference with him and Son is he's a poor man's Son. Simple. Exactly. Son he can't finish better. as well. But for the style of play and how hard it is to get a player in January, you know what? Yeah. I, could deal with it. I, I could deal with that one. I weren't too upset that we got him because in January, it is nigh on impossible to get someone without playing, paying an extra 50% on the price. Right. Yeah. What's your I thoughts know, on Gimenez, by the way? Would you get him in the summer, Santiago Gimenez? Oh, no. Where's it? Is he the one in Holland at the moment? Yeah, final. Yeah, the final guy. Yeah, final. Uh, me, me and Charlie spoke about this again. By the look of it and the way he looks out in Holland at the moment in the Dutch league, yeah, why not? But, again, yeah. it's a lot, lot lower standards than it is. I mean, he's been really good for this season. This season but, he's been amazing, but last season he wasn't. 
And mm. if we really want an out and out striker like Vincent Janssen, he had one good season. We got him to us. Then after that, he played crap. Very true. And if you see the error of Izzy, and you convert the goals from the error of to the Premier League, that would be like ten Premier League goals or maybe eight Premier League goals. They're not somebody we want in the uh, in the Premier League. The way he plays, he isn't that good of a player. Or like in Holland, he's good because the Dutch league is way easier to score. If you look at the last six games, he hasn't scored. He's had two assists. He is not the player that we want. And he'll be like 60 million. And you'll see he'll, he'll be a bit of a flop for us. He won't who do you guys want a striker then? If you had a bigger striker, who would you like? The one, who I, the one who I said about two months ago when everybody asked and people said, no, not him, go for Ivan Tony. Because like, Ivan Tony, I think, a very good player, but I think he's a bit too toxic. Cocky. Yeah. No, he's not cocky. He, he's, he's worse than that. Uh, Madison, he's cocky. Now, there's nothing wrong with your strike. You want your striker to be arrogant. Do you know what? I've missed four chances. Fuck it. I'll bang that one in and I don't care what anyone thinks. I want Izzik. That's who I said for about two, three months now. That is Especially after this game. Especially after this game. He, he was amazing against us. Imagine he, he does that for us instead of against us. Yeah, but you know yeah. what? Mad, the mad thing is any striker with a bit of pace could have been amazing against us there. Right, Alphys, what you got to say there, mate? Hope all's good for you. Well, obviously not, but you know what I'm saying. And this isn't Scotland. It's the English Premier League. How can we do two games now away without touching a glove in the opposition, Fulham and now Newcastle? Yep. I've been, say I've been saying that for a while now. It's not just lately I've got on Angie's case with this one. He has done brilliant again. But again, this ain't Scotland. Right, Lewis K. All, all the captains should be stripped when you're playing shit. They're the ones you look at to see they're useless leaders. Now, you know what? Out of all of them, I think one of the best leaders who seems like leader material on the pitch is someone who I wouldn't go for because I don't like goalkeepers. But Vicario's the one or Romero. Do you know what? For the aggression they show, Hoiberg would also be captain material, but he's just not good enough for an overall player. His attitude, the way he is. Yeah, I agree. How, how do you want to describe him? He's like a poor man. Be fair, he came on. Go on, your <laughs> side. It's poor man. He is. Yeah, he, I be there. Like, he was like he swinging his arms up as soon as he came on. Pardon? He, he plays exactly like Roy Keane used to, except he's 10 times worse. That's why I relate him to certain... I agree with that. Play, Timo Werner is a poor man's son because he plays exactly the same way, but he's just nowhere near as good at it. No, I agree. Right. Daryl, what you're saying here, <laughs> dwarfs at the centre-back, we can't jump. I did call it. Now, the thing is, Van der Ven ain't short. But the thing that was said by a lot of people who knew him from the Dutch and German league, his poor spot is heading the ball. Yeah. Look at Peter Crouch. I mean, what is he, six foot ten? And my man couldn't head the ball come love nor money. Yeah. Just because you pull it don't mean you can head the ball. That's and... why we should sub in Ragusin, because he's massive. He can head her like for he can he's amazing at headering. Out That's in why Italy, I want him to... he was brilliant. Go yeah. on, sorry, Charlie, go on. Sorry? Sorry, mate, go on. Say what you were oh, saying. Right? Right. That's what I was saying. Like, if we swap in Dragosin for like Romero in the last 20 minutes, if we get some corners. Romero, uh, Dragosin has such a good header capability. He can header all those balls that Romero can't, that Van der Ven can't, because he's the only real good header in our team. The rest of the team can't header for crap. So we, that's why we, uh, that's why I think that's the reason that Ange got Dragosin, because he's a good defender and he's tall and can header. So I really want to see him play more, especially in the final moments, especially if we're like building on corners and we get a lot of corners and because we just don't seem to do anything with them. Every corner we seem to get headed away or we just get a touch on it and we get another okay. corner out of it. Get zero on target. We, you see you know with Dragosin, I mean? yeah? The only reason I knew about him is because I follow I follow Serie A, yeah? And I'd, only, I'd heard of him once or twice, but that was all, yeah? And the reason I knew about him is because I think it was on 28th or 29th, Inter Milan is my second team. They were playing Genoa. And he was in defence and he bossed the game from defence and scored a wicked header against them. And Inter Milan have only like lost one game and they basically already won the league. I think they're about 15 points clear. He's got the muscle, he's got the height, and one man he can definitely do is head the ball. But he's more of a content he's more of a contender for R Romero's place. We have not got a left footed the close we got for a left footed centre back is Davis. But here is the problem again. 
if we're going to co- get caught out up the top like that with someone who can run as fast uh, like Van der Ven, and Van der Ven did save our ass a couple of times. Yeah, I agree with that. We get a player that fast. We are not ever. Get, he's a freak of nature. Defenders don't run that quick, apart from maybe Carl Walker, and he ain't an out and out centre back. He's a wing back or full back. Yeah, I agree. Playing this centre back. I've got a shoe off, by the way. All right, then, mate. Nice to see you on here. I'll take care of yourself. Thanks for coming, Lenny. Come on. No problem, mate. See you again another time. Take it easy, fella. Right, bye bye. Have a good one. Bye bye. We're not going to get another defender that quick, are, are we, Charlie? We ain't. Or if we get one, it'll be like 80 million in this market. We're not going to get it in the next five years, I think. Mate, if you've got 500 million, you are not going to get a defender as quick as him. He can yeah. literally run the same the same speed as Usain Bolt, for God's sake. He you can, know? but he's a, he's a specimen, man. He is a specimen. He's a freak. He's a one of, and that's yeah. not in a nasty way. He's a freak of nature on how fast. <laughs> I, I won't say that. <laughs> on how fast he can run. <laughs> no, I'll probably get shot if I said that on here. So I, 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 I know what you're going to say. I'm not going to say Shush, shush. <laughs> he can, yeah, he can, but... he, he's stupidly fast. You are never going to get... I mean, can you imagine a striker that quick? Wow, that would be scary. Right, Stefan Thomas. All right, mate, how are you doing? He's out of his depth. I presume you mean Ange, obviously. I don't think Ange's quite out of his depth. He just needs to adapt. He just needs to learn quicker when to change. That's what he needs to do. And here we go. Lovely person that's going to do really good for us. I've been listening, Dan. I think it's wicked what you're doing because you're calling out all the faults in our club, right? And you're just saying it as it is. And some people are scared to say it, aren't they? Well, I, I just said that I did make a point just now because the guy, I, I don't know who he is, but he said that Postacol glue is out of his death. But he hasn't done any better or any worse than any other uh, managers we've had in, apart from Poch, because Poch got us first, sorry, second and third. Mm-hmm. But we haven't I... improved because we're fifth on goal difference now because we're hitting fucking four goals. Sorry to swear, but... You know what I mean? Mate, it's I've been ridiculous. That one's already done and dusted. Charlie, Fuck. go on. So, I think Ange is going to change up next season, but I think this season just wants to show how he wants to play. And that's why, that's why I think it's so stubborn, because if we don't know how to play his system this season, we won't even be able to learn it next season. I think that's his thoughts about that. I don't know if that's the real thing. I think next year he'll change a bit, but he'll need... If we, if we really want to play his style of football, we'll have to learn it the hard way, and we're learning it the hard way now. Do you know what, though? It's not about learning the system only. It's about the technical skill in our team. There's only Benton Court who can control the ball and keep it, right? Like Dembele used to do. And read the game, yeah? And the rest of them, they're lacking. Madison can read the game. Yeah, I think Madison's off form, right? You know he can read the game and you know he's got the technical skill, but he's totally off form isn't he? He's lost it, the boys. He's not got his mojo. Yeah, because we've seen how Madison can play. That is not it, right? Basuma's gone right off the boil. We know he can get more. That's why I said Madison and Basuma can affect games, and they haven't for the last six or seven. Maybe well, even Basuma more. Basuma hasn't done it for about 20. Yeah, but I'm saying in particular, the last six or seven, he's been pants. Total pants. Now, we all know you're a Hoiberg lover and everybody yeah. knows I don't think he's as bad as people make out. Yes, he has no, his dickhead moments not. on there where he does a he stupid does. pass. Do you know what it is that... with him? He's, he hasn't got the technical ability for, to play no, he hasn't. ball. He hasn't. He's not that type of player. He's a player who uh, puts his bo- foot on the ball, takes his time and looks around and tries to pick out a pass. He's asked, He's been asked to move the ball quickly, which he's not good at. He's not good at that. If we want to play, this this is where I think a lot of Spurs fans do differ, yeah? We, yeah. Ne- we need that DM. No two, no two ways about it. If he sits on the halfway line yeah. and then comes back we as do. the DM and the attacking midfielder comes back to the halfway line in the triangle, whatever system you want to use, our best option now, if we want the anchor man, is Hoiberg as far as I'm concerned. He plays yeah. that for his as country, but he also plays box to box for his country where he goes up front as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. But the thing is, with Hoybier, right, he he can play 
a certain amount of time with that system, but his legs are going. You can see it, right? So when your legs go, Dan, I know it because I was a midfielder as well, right? Mm -hmm. Your legs get tired, right? And when you receive the ball, you can make mistakes, right? With Hoybier, he likes to control the ball, like I said. He likes to put his foot on the ball. He turns, he looks, right? He's not being allowed to do that apart from a couple of times. And then he done one sh 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 oh, shit ball. <laughs> He did two shit balls actually. I counted them. But think, they were really they were shitter than shit. <laughs> I think we should be using using Benton Cornier because yeah. he, I keep saying he did it at Juventus for three years straight and then the fourth season 50-50 because they won wanted him gone. Yeah, Benton You'll get the best out of both worlds with him. Did. No, yeah. he's not the best. DM style that you want, but he reads the game well. He'll get in places yeah. before the ball's even there, and he can play as a deep line playmaker. Stick Benton Court back, yeah. Saras to box to box, and Madison on there, or even play Basuma in his position of box to box. But Basuma for me should be nowhere near that starting lineup. All right, Tommy, yeah. let's see what you've got to say here, mate. True. <laughs> I like Tommy. Sure. He's he a says top the man. truth. He says the truth as he well. Does. He does not hold back. <laughs> yeah. Right, Alan Moore in Klopp, Mourinho, Conte, Pochettino. Doesn't matter who the manager is replacing. Kane with Johnson and Werner, you're doomed. I think the agenda you know against Johnson, Johnson isn't that bad. No, I mean, he's improving no game by game. He, he is slowly improving, yeah? But again, yeah. catch player. That is what he is. He turns up for 10 minutes in a game and then he disappears. Or he turns up, yeah. scores a goal or sets one up, disappears. That is not what you need. Okay, but it is, Nicole, it is first helps. season. First season, he's 20, no, no, 22. He's, no, he's not. Yeah. He's played in the Premiership already. But first, I mean, like, first season under Ange. But yeah, I get, with Forrest, I get he was that. amazing. With I get Forrest, that. But, but he's, I can name two games he's had where he's been solid for more than 60 minutes. After that, it's just been five minutes here, ten minutes there. Yeah. Yes, he's scored got, he I mean, that cross consistent. he's done was brilliant. He looked good at the start. I don't even think we looked bad at the start, even though we got caught out a couple of times. He but... put it on a plate for Werner, didn't he? He put it on a plate, and the boy oh. he hasn't got no he hasn't got no clue in front of goal, Werner. He's got no body shape to get himself into the position to score. He's all wrong, all twisted, and he's skied it over the bar. Ah, oh. I mean, from that close, how do you put it over oh, no. the bar? That's got because to be harder than scoring it. It's, it's the technical awareness when he's in front of goal. He just hasn't yeah. got it, the boy. He the hasn't. Ability. He don't know what ability <laughs> is. Right, you know, Scott, M, what, what are you saying here, mate? Unfortunately, oh it was easy to see this result coming. The way we play, ask for the players to do things they can't. The tactics have us playing a style. We can't work defensively no matter who the players are. Now, you know what? You're right in what you're saying there. I did not see 4 0 coming here. I saw goals coming and I thought we might get a couple because we do we there's only one game we haven't scored in for a while for yeah. a long time. But it the whole thing was shocking today. No no two ways about it. But the main thing you've got to grill on, on this is how far pressed forward we were because we conceded four. And it's just these tactics are not going to work in the premiership game in, game out. They're oh, not. No. Do you know what, though, Dan? We've got such good defenders, right? Like, they can defend. VDV, he can defend. Romero can defend. They're not being allowed to defend, are they? Because the ball's coming over the top and they have to run back. Van de Ven, unfortunately, he slipped today, didn't he? He slipped mm -hmm. and they scored. But they're not allowed to defend like as true defenders where you, you hold your line. Right, and then you drop deep if you need to, right? And obviously you hold your line to catch them offside, but not so high. That's like kamikaze football. It's, it is, isn't it? It's play, uh, and if you want to win a league, you cannot play you score three, we score four. Now, what Wayne <laughs> said here, why do most of us fans want a JFK? I already, I presume you mean Ange. Wake up, Spurs fans, we need a striker. Yes, we do. I'm not one that says Ange out. I'm one that says Ange adapt. Learn that you're in the premiership. But with him as well, it's the same mistakes over and over again. 3-0 down. I thought he'd already woke up when it came to Fulham with that one. 
and he goes and does it again when we're three nil down and makes three fucking subs. Yeah, and you know what? Our tech, if we had better technical players who could keep the ball, hold the ball, we wouldn't have to defend so much because once they've got the ball, Newcastle were hungry for it, weren't they? They were oh. on us like a pack of wolves. You know yeah? what? If we'd have changed, they was going to come at us all guns blazing second half, yeah? Yeah. Now, I know this is a complete conversion of his style, whatever. Me, I would have basically done a Conte with that and gone on the counter-attack because they would have come at us all guns blazing. We'd have caught them possibly on a goal with a counter-attack, 2-1. Now they're nervous. Now it's in, in our, like, come on, let's go for it. Then change back to the other system, obviously not put the defender so far forward, and go for it. But no, yeah. he says, stay the same way when they're blatantly going to come for the kill because they can see we're shitting it. <laughs> and then we concede another two. And yeah. I'll say it again, 3 nil down. Then my man decides to make a sub. We were and people are saying down. we're going too harsh on Ange. Sorry, Ellie, go on. It's all right. We were 2 nil down at 31 minutes because I asked my hubby to check because I wanted to mm -hmm. check when, when he should have really acted on it. Because you could see Newcastle were on the front foot. They were battering us everywhere around the pitch. He thought, right, if you came in and brought in a steady ship, because we're all right, although Hoy Beer, right, and um, who else came on um, in the midfield? Um, no, he, he put on Kolesevsky, didn't he? And he put on Hoy Beer. And who else mm -hmm. did he put on? Lo uh, Lo Celso. Lo Celso right? later. It worked. Yeah, right. Yeah. So we started getting possession, didn't we? You saw it. Yeah. We got more possession. All right, they were hitting us on the counter, but we had the ball for about. 60 70 percent of the play, yeah, and we weren't last... three nil down, yeah, and we only conceded one goal, right? Yeah, that's a big difference, Charlie. Got a question for you, mate. With what my man Michael's just said here, perhaps he has not got another way, and this is it, and he can't change. Now, if this is truly Ange, yeah, my way or the highway, because he knows no other way. We yeah. got a problem. What do you think? Then there is a problem, but I think he has got another way. He just wants the players to learn his system and know it good, do it good. I think that's why we haven't seen a different way that we've played this season. We've just played one way, and maybe against Aston Villa or City, we've changed it a bit. But I think he really just wants to drill into the mind of the players. This is how we play, and next season he'll implement some new tactics or those kind of things. Because I think Andrew just really wants to show how to play his style of football. Hello. If you're there. Okay. With what Michael's just said here, nine months we've been doing this now. The players should know his system. No, they're not going to have it 110%, but they should know their piece by now. And it is obvious that there's something not working there in that defence with how far forward he's going all the time. Yes, they might all love it playing forward, playing attacking ball, but I bet you the defenders ain't too clean on this. Oh, there he's gone. All right. Darryl, she'll come back on if she can. All right, Daryl Denton, once Sonny's gone, this club is done. No, I can't quite agree with that one. We can get another striker there if we get a proper striker and carry on. But do you think we'll fill all the seats up in the stadium if Son's gone? Oh, of course. Of course we will. But that, okay. that's the other, you'll always fill up that stadium. Yeah, that is true. I know true, where because... a lot of the fans come from, but it would always fill up. Well, I mean, look what Audio's just said here. Panici, Paolo, Mal, uh, Paolo Mal, uh, Maldini, Cotskerta and Barassi were sick in the early 90s. Yep, and they would have struggled with this style as well. Any we can... defence are going to struggle with, with yeah, this we... style. We could never get those kind of players, though. I mean, like, yeah, they are Darryl. the top of the top. We need a Tommy appearance. Yes, we do. The link's there for him if he needs it. But as far as I know, he's on holiday at the moment. Yeah. I was trying to say that's another and go out and just grow up. All right, try. Calm down. It's just everyone's opinion, mate. Everyone is allowed their own opinion. I don't agree with Ange out yet, but other people might. It is purely opinion, and anyone is allowed their own opinion. If Andres is in the chat, is he Dutch? Because that's such a Dutch name. Andres yeah. Oster. No. I, I think he's... <coughs> Anne, Anne well, said, I that, have Anne clue, said the way he's going to play, right? Mm -hmm. 
it just needs better, better technicians to master it, you know, because our players are not good technicians. There's only three. There's only three in the team that I can say are really good technically, technically gifted footballers. Yeah. That's not enough. I, I totally agree with you. And for that style, it's definitely not good enough. Right, Tom, I what are you saying here? You Everyone <laughs> smash a light, be Paul. Thank fuck Dan ain't got his snake today. <laughs> I'll be <laughs> You should put it in the Spurs uh, dressing room. Top, Give him top a man, Tom. And hope, <laughs> hopefully, I will be able to get you on here sooner or later, mate. When you want to, I mean, he's, he didn't want to do this anymore because he just had enough of how depressing it was talking about Spurs all the time. You know what, mate? I'm starting. I'm, I, I get it. I don't get it. I understand it. <laughs> Two different things. I understand you, mate. Totally. Do you know what? I'm scared about Arsenal now. If we, I am shitting it. Bad. We can't play that I, bad again, surely. Ellie, I said it on Alan's show before the game. The way we're playing, if we go and play this way, pressing so far forward, Martinelli and Saka, if oh. you think we got torn a new one there, <laughs> Do you know what I don't get, right, Dan? Against Aston Villa, they looked like a team. Yeah, you you think? Yeah, they played as a team. They might not be all technically gifted, but they played as a team and they played in Angie's system and it was working, right? And then we mm -hmm. go to Fulham and get battered three nil, right? And same players, wasn't it? It wasn't different players. And then we get battered four nil today. I just don't get it. How? How they can go from one extreme to the other. It's ridiculous. It, you have to have consistency um, within that system. You know what I mean? Everything has to have consistency. No two ways about it. And that yeah. is one thing that about the only two in our team that have had out and out consistency this season, I'd say, is Van der Ven and Vicario. Yeah. Yeah. Van der Ven had a shit game, so did everyone. It's forgivable when you've only yeah. had one or two. But this is on the trot now. This is Udoji's fifth crap game. We can't necessarily pick a certain player out today because they was all crap. But yeah. a lot of it, this one for me, comes down to the manager for not realising how fast Newcastle are. I mean, that Golden tore us up. Yeah. And knowing how quick Isig is, and telling us to play the same way, exactly. and then Class. waiting, not even making a change at half time, and then waiting till we're three 0 down before he makes the bloody change. In some aspects, yes. Angie's even more to blame in a way because he didn't make the changes that a manager is meant to make. I know. At What's least make them at here? half time. <laughs> we on. got our Tottenham back. <laughs> we had them back a while. We had them back a while ago, mate. <laughs> I've been saying oh it for God. a while, people. Wake up and smell the coffee. It's not even attacking football. It's just Highline. Have you seen the stats? The attacking stats suggest otherwise. When you haven't yeah. got attackers up there who can attack consistently, big sum of rebuild needed. Werner needs to go from Sam Spurs. Mate, how many seasons have we been play, saying this? I mean, this rebuild we got this summer was not bad. It was not bad at all, but there was also a lot of luck in it. Macario weren't our first choice and nor was Van der Ven, but we was lucky we landed on our feet with him. It was down to the fact that we didn't want to go for the more expensive one. And for a change, that actually worked for us. I mean, look, how we've played today, we are going to play time and time again. If, my, if this manager is not willing to adapt in any way, I'm going to wait until next season till he might get some more players. And if he still isn't willing to adapt, then it's another one who's got to go. Fine. He's got us fourth or fifth place this year, better than how Arteta started and that. I get that. But he has got a better team than what Arteta started off with, bar maybe one or two players. He hasn't got such a toxic team there like Arteta had. But if he's not going to change his way in any way against certain teams, are, are we just going to be the accepting Spurs fans again that everybody laughs at because we're all jumping up and down that we got fourth place? Charlie? I think Vicario wasn't really lucky because David Ryan didn't want to come to Tottenham. He he, he basically said that because Arsenal got him for way cheaper. I think... It was our second Vic choice, though. 
we he was our second choice, but David Raya didn't want to come to Tottenham, so he would have then, if scrapping that, he would have been our first choice because David Raya didn't want to, he had no interest in coming to Tottenham. Yeah, the only one so that if really Raya would have been right. interested in coming to Spurs, we would have got him. So yeah, Vergara was our second choice. But what a great second choice it was. Again, the only reason I knew of him is because I follow Serie A. And that's the only reason. And he'd only he's only done two seasons in the top league, by the way, in Serie A. It was the second season at Empley he really started to show where even Buffon spoke highly of him. Kelvin, what's, what are you saying here? This is why I want Ange out. He only has two way, two two way of playing, and he don't get back in need of that style, mate. To me, he hasn't even got two ways. He's only got one way, and he and now and again towards the end, you might see a little of that. Ellie, what do you think on this with Ange next season? Gets the players he wants, but he won't adapt his game. What do you reckon? Where's it going to take us? Where can it take us? Or is it just we've got another stubborn fella there and we need to look at someone who's a bit more open-minded overall? Yes, we all got our style of play, but come on, that game just showed it again. You need to change little bits for certain teams. Ellie? I think, uh, Ellie, are you still there? Bye. Oh, I think your link might have gone funny again. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you now. Yeah, so right. Everything so I've just I've, said there, what do you think? Yeah, I was just checking the league, right? So we've scored 65 and lit in 49, right? And Aston Villa have scored 64 and lit. Oh, I can't remember it. Anyway, there's one, one goal difference between us, right? So we're on the level with Aston Villa, but then when you look at the other teams, they've conceded a lot less. So it's the defence that needs working on because we're scoring enough goals. We've only sc we scored six less than um, than Man City, so we we are scoring. The play is That's working. That's not the problem. I know it's the defending side of it, right? So we got it's the get... style. Yeah, yeah, but Dan, look, right. So if we we can convert those goals into more victories, yeah, mm -hmm. right. We haven't got enough victories, have we? over the other teams. We're only six goals behind. We're not far off the other team scoring. So we've got to defend better as a unit and defend differently. Like you said, he's got to adapt, right? I wasn't one of those people who say he has to adapt. I think he needs to get uh, the team working defensively better in that system. Okay. Yeah, because when we're, when we're out of transition and we're attacking... We look so good when we're attacking, you know, we're popping it about, you know. Some of the players are not technically gifted, so they, they lose the ball, right? And then once they lose the ball, they're out of shape and they're not disciplined to get back into that Postacoglu unit. Because we, I've seen, I know people say uh, uh, Scotland's the Farmers League, blah, blah, blah. But you could see the Celtic team uh, players got it when they were out, of, when they were out of, um, attacking and they went back into their defensive mode, they were much better than us because I watched a lot of Celtic, right? Mm -hmm. They were much that's why Ange Postacoglu said, I need the remote control because he needs to put them where he needs to put them. Yeah, they're, so, with what... they're not disciplined because they're young as well and they're inexperienced. Yeah. So, we do need more experienced players as well, as but well what as you're technically saying there, gifted. It's... <sighs> I've got to disagree saying, on the point with the defence. We need to get better within his system. Because I don't yeah, think it's always his system that's the problem. I think it's the his players. System, his, his system is where we're pushed so high and we get caught with yeah. the same goals every time. So it's got to have something to do with the system. Yeah, I, They're only doing it's, what it's, they're told to. Yes, yeah, you're going to have times where certain players are at then. fault. I the know, players but, are not disciplined within their system. They lose... Right. That's why he said I need the re remote control because they're not in position. I totally get it. But, but when you're that high out. up the pitch, you're going to get caught out anyway. And without Van yeah. der Ven there, we'd have been caught out 10 times more. So it is part of the system as well. But you, you you're know right in what you're saying as well. Have you noticed when we're attacking, we've got eight or nine players forward and he leaves Van der Ven and sometimes Romero or Porro to hold. That's not enough. Right, you need to have at least three or four back to you know, you can't go eight, nine up. That's that's suicide football. But right? are so they it, just doing what they've been told to do? 
I don't think they have because I've never so, seen Celtic do that. Yeah, but if they're doing it game after game, then he should tell them not to do it, and then they shouldn't yeah, do that's it. Where, and if that's they're still where the doing manager it, comes then in. he needs to change some of the players round. I think this comes down to the sheer fact, yes, mistakes off players, but also the way he tells them to do it. And against certain teams, it will work. Against other teams, it is not going to work. And they don't even have to be one of the best teams. As all a team mm. needs against us at the moment is someone with a half decent pass, a quick wing back, a quick winger on either side, and a fast forward, and we are fucked. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, Rob Belcher. Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> right, Rob Belcher, top man, always keep contact with him, always speak sense. Yeah, he does. And on today's performance, with a squad so lacking in determination, leadership, and attacking threat, if we don't go big, we need to go big on upgrades. Yeah, I totally mm. agree, mate. But again, yeah. I still think you could have put the best defence the planet has ever seen on this system, and we will still concede goals. And the amount we concede, I'll say it again, even if we go and win 20-odd 20, 20 games playing you score three, we score four, we still end up in second place because of our goal difference, because of our goal ratio, because we concede yeah. too many goals. And Stell said it perfect on his game. It's not even the amount of chances we give away. We're one of the best at that in the top three or four. It's the chances we do give away. They're so open. It's like saying, please score against us. It's the yeah. quality of chances we give away. And but, it's the same thing, game after game. So but you there's know what, got Dan? to be something with a system. I agree with you. I agree with you. But you know what? If you've got better technical players... You won't have that problem because you're going to be attacking the goal and you'll keep the ball, right? And you can you can craft out a goal like just like that because the technical skill in your team is I... crafting out those goals and you will score more than them regardless yeah. of the defence. But if you still keep conceding players, two or three a game, Rob, Ellie... That's what Rob Belch is saying. If we've got more I technical know. players, better players, the system will work better because they're better. And yeah, you will beat it teams. might work better. But it's still not going to work properly in the Premiership. Because, again, I'll say but it again, you, you can have the best players you, on the planet on there. Go and stick that Barcelona team on there or Real Madrid when they had the Galacticos. If they played that style and pressed their defence that high every game, they're going to concede every I game. They I might score with, three or four every game. You, with that you cannot go for a league like he what, says he wants to and concede that many goals. You can't do it. Anybody yeah. is going to concede with that. Even if we get better players, we might concede less, but we're still going to concede nearly every game. Well, Two clean sheets in 25. Take this into consideration as well, right? Man City play a high line. They do, right? They always play the high line, right? And they get mm -hmm. caught out. But the reason why they win is because they've got better technical players who can play Pep's system, right? And they pop it about and their passing is crisp. And they will beat teams because they're better technically. That's what Rob Belch is saying. We get I... more technical players. We can still play that high line and win. We can. Yes, but a lot of teams, Look, you can't play that high it. line. Man City you... improved it because they've done it and they've won three premierships on the trot. Man City do not play like that. They do not play they that play high They play with a high line, though. They yes, do play but not that line. bloody high. I don't know another team that plays that high. This is what I'm saying. We're going to concede they, they're, every they're better, game. They're better at recovery as well. Yeah, Man totally. City. And they've got someone like Rodri in the middle who we will never yeah. ever get because we will not spend that money. But we the play we can get too high. The Certain we can teams, get you can do this. Yeah. I mean, Charlie, seeing as you get quiet for five minutes, do you <laughs> think with this high line that we can go for a league conceding goals every game with this high line, if he does not change it or at least change it for certain games? I'm trying to think of the bet. I don't know. It's a hard one. I think, yeah, 80% we could win, but 20% is just not going to work. So I think we could challenge, but we could never win. So I really think sometimes we need a plan B. And this high line works against a lot of teams, but it doesn't work against all, as we've seen against Newcastle, Fulham, Aston Villa, like all these losses, but we've won a lot with it too. So you can't say it's really bad. We're doing a bad job because it's Andrew's first season. Everyone's getting into touch with it. 
but we do need a plan B because sometimes it just doesn't work and we just see, uh, keep seeing to the... Because we're basically as high as a, as a Jamaican on a Friday night. It's crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, I, to I totally get it. It's his first season on that, yeah? But my man's had nine months now and he still keeps making the same mistakes. The manager. He still keeps yeah. making the same mistakes. Because you know what mistakes. it is, right? With, with Ange, right? He believes in his philosophy of football, right? And he's quite a very stubborn man. He's stubborn in the sense that he trusts his system, right? But he does. I don't think he trusts his players. That's why he came out with that comment. That I need right. the remote control to put them in are the you, place. I use Conte as an example again. He came into the Premiership and played a different style that he usually does with Chelsea. A couple of games it didn't look too good, and then he got banged up by Arsenal and said, "You know what? I'm going back to this way." And then Chelsea went next season, barely conceded a goal, banged in a load of goals with his boring fossil football, so they say, and won yeah. the bloody league. Yeah? yeah. If it ain't working. You've got to change something or you've got to adapt. I keep repeating it. it mm. And he doesn't. If he's just going to be stuck in this way, he's we are stubborn. not going to get the quality of players that could make this work. We it's not going to happen. City quality. We're not going to get that. Yeah, We're going to but get, even Man City, we, Pep would I say, not play Simon like this. Nah. Pep, Pep wouldn't play like this unless he was 4-0 up and needed to score a couple more. They played a total different style when they played us. Pep has we a plan A, flash. B and C. Yeah. Or he'll change one or two things in the team. So will Klopp. Well, maybe Even he'll Conte. learn. Maybe he'll learn, Dan. Maybe he'll learn for next season and he'll tweak but When he bit. says here, Ellie, and he blatantly says, I ain't changing my way for nobody, I must admit my hopes are wearing thin. Yeah, but a lot of managers say things they don't really mean. You know, I'm not saying he will change. I'm just saying he's probably confident because it's done well for him everywhere he's gone. You know, you, you sort of, you've got that sort of aura about you. You think, right, I went to Celtic, I won five out of six trophies. I, I went to the Australian under-21s, I won something with them. I went to right. the national team, I won something with them. Because he, he's right. the only coach... I was speaking to the Hotspur hippie and he said he's the only coach in the Premiership who's managed um, a national team, right? That doesn't mean he mean he's better, but I think what he is... And what right? national team did he manage? Australia. Yeah, end of. The thing is, you you can't put down the Australians because they've had, they've had very, very good football in terms of their thing. They haven't and when have they ever yet. looked like doing anything in the World Cup? No, Come on, Ellie, no. do we? But they beat England, didn't they? When yeah. Rob Green ma muffled it into the goal. So mm -hmm. you, there's 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 horses for courses, right? He he is a stubborn man. We know this. He believes in his philosophy of football, right? He just needs to get better players, better technicians, tweak it at the back. I agree with you there, because it's so suicide. Needs, it is. Yeah, it is suicide football when you think about it. I wasn't thinking that way before, but I saw it plain and clear today. What you're basically saying is, yeah, that like he's so set on his way that it works and it has worked everywhere he's been, yeah? He's never had a big job. Celtic is not a massive job. It might be in Scotland, but not compared to teams over here, yeah? What you're basically saying is like me being a level two UFC fighter, just getting into, and now I get into the top bit, and I'm thinking, right, I can do it exactly the same way against a certain fighter and I'll get my head punched in. Even yeah, the but... UFC fighters know it. There's certain fights that they have that they have to change a little bit. Maybe they have to block a bit more. Maybe they can't go flying in with a kick so much because the person's got such a good rebound punch on him or whatever. You you have to adapt. And yeah, he's not doing it. Celtic, right, you say they're not a massive club, but they are really a massive club and they've won the European Cup. Right, so they are. And, they've got a massive support, and they're yes, a big club but in Scotland. But stick them in the Premiership, Ellie, and they're yeah, going to struggle mid-table. Yeah, because they'd have to buy better players, wouldn't they? They are not a massive club, not compared to. I mean, money-wise, they are probably lower than our fifteenth. Charlie, go on, mate. Okay, yeah, but look, Ange Postecoglou, coming from Australia, did not have the start as any other European manager would have with getting to big clubs. He he first had to go to Japan, had to go to Australia because nobody else saw him. He went to Serbia, all yeah. these kind of small clubs, because he didn't have the recognition. Because the managers up there they don't get any recognition, zero. 
So to go to Celtic is a is a hard job already. He did a good job at Celtic, and now he's being recognised. Yeah, he won no, no five out of six. I'm not saying it was a piece of piss what he done up there yet, but I mean, come on, Celtic haven't even got the money that Brighton have got. But in yeah, but, but in Scotland they are massive. But Ellie, look what yeah. happened to them when they played in the Champions League. Four I'm nils. Not, I'm not defending him. I'm just saying Cel that Celtic he believes are not, in his system. They might be big in Scotland, but they are not big in football as a whole anymore. They might have won something years. So did Aberdeen. Nottingham Forest have done the double in the Champions League. Aston Villa have won it. Yeah. That's you can't well, just go on fifty Aston, years ago. Aston Villa have dropped off, obviously. They haven't yeah, won any. But you can't but, just rate the team they, on what they were fifty years ago. If we want to be like that, we can say AC Milan has yeah, been one of the biggest and best teams know, ever. But in the past money, twelve years, money they have not been a shadow nowadays. of what they were. I think I think we've got the money. Now we need to get the power and we need to get the trophies. Right, because it's the time to strike. We've got the money, the FFP ruling. We're going to have a lot of money to spend. Let's see if they spend it and bring in those technical players that we need to play his system, tweak it at the back, and I think we'll be cooking. I think we really will. But we just again, need better players. I know, but again, you're saying he has to adapt. Yeah, he does. And this I, is I what agree. he's not going to do. I, I don't think he's going to. I he, think he's well, too stubborn. And I think where he's what? What is he, 67? No, he's only 59. Okay, I I'll thought say, he was a bit older. I'll say that. that. No, I'll say no. that. No, he's My bad, I thought, you, I thought he was a bit older. No, he's he so he he's, he's 59 now. <laughs> where he's so set in his way, like you're saying, it's one everywhere. So he's going to stick to that way. And that way is not going to win us a league. But that's what all the coaches do. But they do tweak it. They, they exactly. stick to their core philosophy, but they do tweak it. They do. Yeah. You're I mean, right. And, You're right. And the other thing is with Tottenham, I mean, we didn't even do this today. We we either don't turn up for the first half and turn up for the second half, or we turn up for the first half and not the second half. And that's exactly what it was like with Conte. What has actually changed? Oh, we play yeah. attacking football. Well, okay. What has actually changed, Charlie? What has actually changed? Except the football is better to look at at times, and at other times it's more painful to look at. I think the mentality within the squad has changed a lot. There's a lot more uh, family feel. Players actually yeah. like to come to play. That's that's a big difference. I think he's done a good job on that because Conte didn't really make that thing. Yeah, and I think very true. Yeah, the good play. I think we've got more of an attraction to our club now. Players will choose our club over other clubs now. I think that's where we have a difference between. Uh, with them with Conte. Strikers and another may be. Sorry? Strikers may be. I think a defender would be shit scared to come to our club. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like Dragerson came to us instead of Bayern München. Um, Berger came to us instead of uh, Barcelona. These kind of these type of things would never have been heard of with Conte or this stuff. It was all, yeah. they left to Barcelona instead of Tottenham. He's changed that aspect. I think he's done good. And to say Ange out, all this stuff, I know you know what you're saying, but a lot, a lot of people are saying now in the comments, I think it's a bit stupid. He's only had nine months. Give him another season, see where he is. And if he doesn't do good, then then we'll get rid of him. But give him this year is basically his uh, study year. Nobody thought he would have done well. Kane left. We had nothing. We had nothing to build off of. The players that we had played very badly last year. They're playing way better this year. So thinking about like thinking, taking all that into account, I think we couldn't be that. Shouldn't be that mad with Andrew Postecoglou, even though he is playing with this high line because nobody yeah. really expected this. And just give him. Just give him this letter of season, see how it does next year. And if he doesn't do well next year, we'll just get rid of him. I'm totally agreeing with you, yeah? I'm 100% right. He's not Ange out yet, not at all. We're still in fourth or fifth place, whatever, and that. And he has had a good first season. It's just, it, to me, it's no different to a player. And this is what I find with a lot of Spurs fans, too accepting, and you can't say a bad word about anyone. Like, if Son goes and misses five open goals and you say he's had a shit game, people will go off their head. I don't care. <laughs> when you're good, you're good. And you get told. You get yeah. quality for it. You get credit for it. When you're bad, you need to be told about it as well. Yeah. If we want, I mean, here's a perfect example. Alex Ferguson, his team could have won 37 goals, won uh, 37 games, won the league with 10 to spare and whatever. And then they go and lose that last game 3-0. It'd go off his head. Why? Because he's a winner. Mm. He ain't taking no crap. 
and I agree with it the same. If you want a team to be good, we can all sit here and say, yes, this is better with Ange, that is better with Ange, this is better with Ange. But there is problems, blatantly problems there. And too many people don't want to look at the problems. Well, if you don't look at a problem and see a problem, then there is no problem. Mm -hmm. So if you're not looking at it and seeing it, and then there's no problem, then there's no problem to fix. The problem's still there. So right. this is what I'll ask you quickly, Charlie, and I'll come to you, Ellie. Yeah. Ange, is he naive or is he ignorant? And what I mean by ignorant, ignorance is bliss. Can see there's a problem, but I play my way and that's that. Is he ignorant or naive? Because I'm sure he's one or the other. Naive is that you uh, don't ever take the blame yourself, right? It's always somebody else's fault. Or what's no, naive that's again? More ignorant. That's more ignorant. Oh, okay. um, what's naive? naive? Naive is when you basically just you're too you're too believing sort of thing. How do I describe it? Um, naive is basically where you get done over basically, and then go and do the same thing again, or feel like you know what you're doing. Wherever, if I remember the right phrase for it, unless you can explain that better, Ellie. Naive is gullible, basically. Um, it's like, it's when, you're gullible. when you fall for it, yeah. yeah I feel like it's a bit of both. A little things. bit of both. Mm -hmm. Because if you see him play against Fulham against uh, today, the same things happen. As you said, a lot of the goals are the same. So taking that into account, he is a bit naive and ignorant, uh, both. Because how he plays, it's always the same. But he, he does believe in himself. But he sometimes he believes himself a bit too much and then he makes the same mistakes. He doesn't seem to change the mistakes. And sometimes he does change the mistakes. And we do praise him for that. But he makes a lot of mistakes, which he can change, especially if you've seen how many times it's happened. He has had the chance to change them. So in that in that aspect, yes, he has been a bit naive and a bit ignorant. Ellie? Yeah, I, I, I agree. All right, because you have, you have to try and change it up a little bit because... Um, like I said, right, I've, I've, I've said this three times now, he needs better players to, to perform, right? And the players that he's got now are not going to get him good results consistently because they're not consistent mm -hmm. players, right? Mm -hmm. I won't say he's naive. What I would say is more ignorant because he just sees the same things happening and he's not acting on it, Right? And you you can trust your players up to a point, Dan. But if they're mm -hmm. making the same mistakes and you're telling them not to make those mistakes, because I'm sure he's ironing it all out for them, and they're bombing mm -hmm. forward and leaving themselves massive gaps behind. You can't do that in the Premiership because there's better players that are going to score goals. And this act is proof, right? He's a top class striker. He took full advantage of it, right? So you have you have to tweak it tweak it a bit like but you have to make sure that the players right are doing what they're supposed to do and they're not because i'm sure Ange ball doesn't look like that in his head do you know what i mean he it doesn't don't. look like that he looks then, like much better because he, then wouldn't Ellie, go out, he wouldn't go that, deliberately out to play like that would he then that is atrocious. ignorance is bliss then that is ignorance is bliss yeah. Because there's the problem there and he's ignoring it because my way works and that's all there is to it. Yeah, but and he might not be ignoring it, Dan. He might be saying to them, look, you do When this, he doesn't do make this, a change at half... Yeah, that, on, Ellie, that, that I, can, I can agree with. You know, when you're not making the change quick enough or you've acted too late, that, mm -hmm. that I can... But he's trying his best to get these players to adapt to his system and some of them are not cutting the mustard, Dan. A lot of them, I would say seven out of the 11 do not cut the mustard out of that no, team. But again, when it comes to half time and he doesn't make the change and he doesn't make changes till we're 3 0 down, there's obviously something he's not seeing. Or I feel he's sorry just too for him as well. Or he's just too ignorant to change it. No, I feel sorry for him as well because he hasn't got the players on the bench who are good enough technically either to affect the game. He hasn't. Look, Hybier's not technical. Mm -hmm. Celso is, but he's he's lost it because he, think... he doesn't seem interested. He, he just comes yeah. on the pitch and you just you get that vibe from him that he doesn't want to really do it. You know, he hasn't got that fire in his belly. Whereas Emerson came on, everybody's calling Emerson shit and he had the fire in his belly and he wanted yeah. to work hard. Yeah? 
the boy wants to work hard, but then he hasn't got the technicality. You know, no, so he hasn't. But again, we, have, we need she, players who've got the technical skill and the fire in their belly. And every the team needs the, the player with the technical skill, yeah. But again, when the manager isn't making the subs, or the manager's still bringing on starting with players like Basuma when he's had about 20 shit games straight, yeah. the manager is the problem. You don't play him, he's the one who says the decisions. He's the one who says who comes on the pitch. He's the one who you picks what, it. Though, He's the one who makes the changes. I and when he ain't that. doing it, when he ain't doing it, the manager is a big part of the problem. Right, I just want to read out a couple on I here because I've just that. been clicking. You've got to drop um, players' asses. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, when you're saying you'd rather Hoiberg on the pitch than uh, Basuma, you know yeah. there is something what, not right there. You see there. what I mean? And I feel yeah, sorry for him because he's only got Hoiberg on the bench. He hasn't got another technical player who can affect the game. Stick Benton Cordia. But right, yeah, what did. 52 109 is saying? Problem is that John Johnson Deason isn't that good. For me, the player can get better, but he's a patch. He turns up for 10 minutes here and there. Spurs have conceded 10 and scored one in the last two visits to St. James's Park. Oh, Very no. true. <laughs> it didn't take rocket science to see Isaac and Golden were going to be a threat. Thank you. This is basically exactly what Alan and me were saying on Alan's show before the game is let's just hope he tries because they are going to be hard work. Now imagine that when you've got Martinelli and Saka coming up against you. You're up shit street. Ange, Smell the copy, mate. The you're gonna have you're gonna <laughs> you, you're gonna and even Havertz at the moment. You're yeah. gonna have to change something. You're gonna even if it just me, even if he just told the team, come back five or ten yards. Nope, what are we gonna do then? Wait until we're two, three nil down and he goes. Hang on a minute, I better make a sub now. He did it against Fulham. His past two games, he's actually made really good subs and I've bigged him up for it. I've bigged him up every time he gets it right, but when he gets it wrong, he seems to get it fucking wrong. But you know I mean, what, Dan, though? We were only playing Nottingham Forest. They're not they're not quite Newcastle, are they? You know what I mean? That like Newcastle got a top striker and is that what have Forest got in comparison? Yeah, but and Forest still scored. Yeah, they still scored, yeah. Of course they did. City is winning. Arsenal well. second. How much is City winning? 1-0, but yes. I, I don't think they'll bottle it. So, just hope, yeah, hope City. I don't want God, Arsenal to win. They're struggling against Luton to score. <laughs> but Luton is hard <laughs> against yes. score because they're they're really defensive. I mean, like, they're not an easy yeah. bunch to score against. You haven't no. seen a lot of 4 nils against Luton this season. I know, we only beat so well. 1-0 at their ground. I think Arsenal beat them 4-3, didn't they, at their ground? Exactly. They're, they're, they, they're not easy to beat. They fight for the ball. We need we need fighters like the Luton players, even though, and they they're just they're technical. The Luton players, I I see them and I'm well, thinking Luton ain't well, Luton ain't no got. mugs. <laughs> Luton ain't easy, especially for the size of what they are. Yeah. Right, just want to yeah. read out a couple on the side. Daryl Denton, purple patch song. Enough said. Do you know what, mate? I've nearly had my head bitten off for that. Not that I actually care. Son is a very good player, but with his goal scoring history, for me. He has all, always gone five games, he'll score six goals. And then four games, he'll do nothing. And then in two games, he'll score four goals because he'll score a double in each. He has always been a patchy scorer for me. He'll have his consistency over six games and then he'll go quiet for five games. But then he'll make those goals up in two games. And then it'll look like he scored 12 goals in 12 games and that he's been double consistent when he hasn't. Yeah. Do you get what but I'm remember, saying? Remember, he's not a striker. He's not a striker, Sonny, but we've been playing him because we ain't got a striker because Richarlison's been out. Yeah, but the way, the way he finishes, he's as good as any striker out there with both feet. I mean, look at the way it was playing when Kane was getting dropped behind him and Kane, who is as good a passer as everybody oh, out there. Yeah, and Kane was just yeah. sitting back more, putting the long ball over forward for Son to run onto it and put it in the back of the net. That's being a striker. Son is more than capable of being a striker. He can finish with both feet. He can take it. He can run it. He's more of a yeah. poacher sort of thing, I would say. He's but, instinctive in front of yeah, goal, isn't he? But he's more than yeah. good enough to be but a striker. Go on, Charlie. All... I know yeah. it's a weird shout, but why don't we play Pedro Porro as a box-to-box? -box? Because he's got all these passes in him. He's got. He's a good dribbler, technical. 
He's oh, no. right at defending. And I think he could make a lot of like very creative passes for us, Sean, or for attackers that we are not getting right now from the midfield. That's what means. It's like a weird shout, did, Paul. Like what Liverpool did with uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yeah, yeah, it's a weird shout, but I, why not? The other thing I don't like about this stuff, I do not dig this inverted football crap. Again, each their own at the end of the day, and it might have worked at certain teams. But it is showing us time and time again why we get caught out on the side because the inverted wing backs are up there, which almost blocks our up front that much that Madison can't move. And then we're naked on the flanks again. Up for, I mean, if you want the best out of Poro, for me, you do what you could do with Trent. And that's either play him as an out and out winger or play him as a wing back that overlaps so he can cross the ball in because he is the only one who can cross that ball regular. Johnson, give him 10 attempts, he'll get two or three good crosses in. Porro, give him 10 attempts, I reckon you'll get six or seven out of him. But we play him inverted, yeah. when for me, he's more of an overlapping player, or you can even get a way of playing him with a winger. So, right, Charlie, what does Ange need to do, and what do we need in this team to make it you work? You mean with tactics or with players? I yeah. don't really... Both. Tactics, we need a plan B, especially against low block teams and fast paced teams. Um, players, we need That's a very a good defensive midfielder. Yeah, B and C. We need a very good defensive midfielder because I feel like our midfield's very sloppy. That's where we're losing the uh, ball in the field a lot. This game, mm. we lost the ball so many times in midfield. Those long balls came in, Isaac just ran over and shot everything in because the midfield's playing very sloppy and the defence wasn't on top. But a good midfielder and a good striker, I think we need a very good. Defender like um tap sober or that Italian guy, or like we just need some backup defenders because Udogi isn't cutting it for me the last two games. And Van der Ven will get his injury, so we need a change for him. And I feel like, yeah, Poro is injured now, so who do we swap him in for now? We've got Poro here, but we don't have any real quality to swap him in for. You could say Dragson, but Dragson isn't as attacking, he's more of a defender, defender. So that's what I feel like a, a good a defensive midfielder, a good striker, and uh, some defenders. And with tactics, yeah, I think playing against the big six, we're playing all right. I'm not too worried about the big six, but especially against low blocks and high, fast pace, like very fast, but that we play today, we need a bit of changes. That's what I feel. Well, with what you've said there, you've used that word that a mate of ours, Alex, really don't like. And I don't like it too much anymore either. Now, in a team of 25, you need backup players in there, yeah? But, what I want to see on Tottenham is players that can either get in that first team now or players that are good enough that if that player don't play properly, out. No, yeah, that's what I meant to say. I didn't mean to say back up. Games. I meant to say like a good player, like a like a player that can compete. I meant to say compete with the Vendor and their stuff, not back up. Because we need yeah. somebody who can compete with them. I mean, it's like what Phil's just said here. Who watched today's game and still wants Timo Werner? Well, I'm, I've changed completely on him. I want him gone now. Ellie? <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I, I've I've not wanted him. I, I'm calling him out all the time. And even on uh, Kate's stream, I said 60-40 against him. Because there's, mm -hmm. there's, part, there's parts of his game that are very good, but there's parts of yeah. his game that are atrocious, and they're so atrocious, you think, nah, we're not going there. But they'll sign him. They will sign him. They're going to sign him as a squad player, aren't they? But he starts. Yeah. He started more games than Sonny on that side, and Sonny is better than he, at at doing his job, right? Yeah, it's just because Richarlison shit. He's out injured. We're playing him instead. Yeah, right? but Richarlison's but, crap anyway, and we all know it. Yeah, he had a good patch. His first patch in what sixty odd games, and that he scored man. a few goals. That's all he's but, got. Poor thing. Again, I feel if sorry people are happy <laughs> with Richarlison up front and Werner on the left. Yeah, but you that's what we've got, so he has to play with it, doesn't he? You you can only play with what your what tools you've got in the box, right? I get and then that. If, if the other tools are blunt, <laughs> you're not gonna get anywhere. I like Dell in the Irish Hotspur, he goes that went well, didn't it? <laughs> he oh, made he's... me fucking oh my god, I was splitting my sides. <laughs> the other thing I say with it is every manager wants to play his way, but when you haven't got the players to play your way, you then have to adapt to what you do have. It's like what you say. You've got a certain amount of tools, but only half of them work. Yeah. So you've got to start using the tools that work to 
for the ones that don't work to try and get the job done. Do you see so, what I'm saying? Yeah, you're so, saying that he's found that out already. You think he's found that out already and he realises that he's just got to try and, you know, stick to his policy, stick to his philosophy, but... He needs he needs to change something at the back because we leave ourselves right open. Open is an understatement. It's like walking <laughs> down the street with no underwear on. You, you open <laughs> is an understatement with it, and every time it's the same goals every fucking like, time. Like the Go red on, light district, Dan. Um, I an think understatement. I think what we're saying about Richardson. I know with Conte he wasn't good, but he was struggling with mental health. Had a groin injury that, or had an injury that he had to get surgery on. Didn't get that. But since he had the injury, the surgery, all that stuff, the the ten games he got back, he scored like eight goals. He had a goal or an assist every game, except for the FA Cup match or the match against Brighton. And then he got another injury. But to say that is crap. But see, when he was actually crap. fit, on, but when he was completely fit, he played so well. He did a lot for us. I know he isn't the best striker, but he did do a lot for us in the games that he was actually fit. I know it isn't a lot, but he did. They aren't the only games he's actually been fit in, yeah? And the problem is with someone like Richarlison is as soon as he goes and misses a chance, that's it. He's on the floor. He's done. He's dusted. That's where you need your arrogant striker who can miss four, four open goals and say, do you know what? I don't care. I'm going to put it in the back of the goal next. Not yeah. someone who's like, shit, I just missed a chance. Panic, 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 and puts it over the net. Like Timo Werner. <laughs> yeah, because Isaac missed a few, didn't he? He missed about mm -hmm. three or four, but he had the presence of mind to score the ones that counted, right? That's what strikers do. They miss chances, but when when it, when the uh, crunch comes down to it, they, they do finish, you know? That's what yeah, their class is. Because Son used to be like that, didn't he? Where give him the chance and he'll score, but give him too much time... And he used to go funny with it, didn't he? Yeah. But but now honest, Son has adapted better that you can also give him time in front of goal and he will put it in the back of the net. The only way Werner ever puts it in the back of the net is on a split moment hit. Give him two seconds to think about it and he's screwed. I mean, it's at the point where I can't remember what game it was, but it came across the goal line and the defender put it in the back of the net. And you was just happy that the defender hit it and not and not Werner, who was right next to him. That says everything. Oh, no. <laughs> we can't oh. keep going for players like Werner and things like that and expect to do something. To be honest, this game made me want Isaac way more. Like, it's how he played, the confidence he has. If we have that at Tottenham, like, playing like Isaac, I really just want him, actually, because I saw... We could get 40 million, 50 million for him. I think that's all right. That's an all right deal. The, the things he scores, he had 17 goal goals this season. If, if we're going to pay 65 million for Richarlison, I'll pay 90 million for Isaac. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know but I mean? he's good. He's playing a good season. He's got he's got 17 goals with the, uh, with the Newcastle that is struggling this season. Like, actually struggling. judged him because of his injury last season and he didn't do too much, yeah? Because of his injury. Isaac is the player I would want. I said this about two months ago when people were asked. He is a player that I would kill for, and I think he would work with his system perfect. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't, I don't get why everybody wants that Go Goy Carez or like the Solanke because last season Goy Carez was not good. He had an alright season. He came to Sporting, had the best season of his life. But who says he'll ever do that in the Premier League? Ever do that in any other team? Same with Solanke. He was crap for the last past season. I mean, this he, season he's been playing good, and now he's everyone wants him. I don't get why that happens. It just. He isn't proven yet. I know he scored. He's had one really good season, but that doesn't say he'll do it for everyone. That's very true. What Andreas has just said here, Dan, we have a lot of dead wood to shift. Not as much as we did, but we still have a fair amount that needs to come out of there. But we aren't ruthless. So true, mate. We're too accepting. As Spurs supporters and Spurs club, we are too accepting. Way too accepting. Angie's just saying what the fans want to hear. I'm 50-50 yeah. with he says what the fans want to hear. I think part of it is because he's trying to keep everything together. I get that. But I think part of it is he's no different to Conte. It's just the difference with them two is, I'm not going to relate to no names, but is with me and certain other players that do YouTube. They go say something in such a way where people are like, yeah, that's a, yeah, I agree. I'll go and say it in a way 
because I just say it blatantly how I see it. I get told I'm rude, this, that, whatever. I don't care. I just say it how I see it. I ain't got the best way with words. And that person could say exactly what I did, but in a different vocabulary, and it sounds 10 times better and 10 times more friendly. When I'm saying exactly the same thing, but it's not friendly and it sounds aggressive and it sounds negative. When they're both actually talking the same thing. Mm. Would you agree with that, Ellie? Yeah, I agree with you. And um, also, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I agree with most of the things you say, Dan. But uh, I was just looking up his act's record, right? He scored, he scored 10 in 22 last season, one assist. And he scored 17 goals in 24 games, mm. one assist. So it's better than all our forward line. All of it. He scored more. He hasn't assisted as many Sonny, but he's scored 17. So his record is good. We need we need a striker who's going to score us 25-30. He's on target for that. 24 matches, 17 goals. So we've got... I don't get it why it says 24 matches, because it should be more, shouldn't it? What, that he played? Old, I think this is an old record, because it, it can't be 24 matches. Hmm. I'll look for you right we've now. Played more, we've played more matches, is it? I mean, what Kev's saying here, Ange will be gone really? by September. I don't think he will. Um, I hope he isn't, because he still needs next season before we make a final judgment on him. I think this is what a lot of people seem to misunderstand. We are not... Well, oh. I am not judging Ange overall. I am judging him on what I see game by game. I don't just judge a player over five minutes of a match. I judge a player over 90 minutes of a match. Yeah. And the player needs to be on it. There is only one player who can play a game and go missing the whole game, do nothing. But as long as he does his job when it comes to the crunch, that's all that matters. And that is a striker. A striker can go missing like Haaland. How many times does Haaland go missing? You see nothing of him, then bang, bang, two goals when it comes to it. That is the only one who can get away with it. Defenders can't do that. Goalkeepers, yeah, okay, they can sort of, if they've got nothing to do, they've got nothing to do. But when it comes to the crunch, they've still got to be alert to save that shot. Everyone else on the pitch needs to be with it a majority of the game, 80 minutes of the game. And we don't. We only ever do 45 minutes. And there, we didn't even do 45 minutes. I think we'd done about 15 minutes at the start. And as soon as that first one went in, it was game over. What? Is I just don't know where to go with it. I can only judge Ange on what I see. And with all the good that I see with him, I see a lot of faults as well. But people just want to ignore that. And this is where I go back to what I say at the start. He's got to adapt. Will he get the players he needs to play this style? No way. Because you need someone like Rodri in the middle for that, at least. And... I just don't see how this can take us anywhere. If we get a cup, I love the man to death. That's all I want. Do you know what? If we finish 15th but won the cup, I'd be happy. But then look at the mistake he made at the start. Hang on a sec. I've just got a message here from uh, Brian. I'm just going to send him the link if he wants to come on in 10 minutes. There you go, mate. I've sent you Big the link, Brian. Brian. I've just sent Brian the link, so if he wants to come on, that's fine. But with what I was saying, we can't just have players on that pitch who are going to play for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. They need to play as a team for 90 minutes, and we don't do it. It's not changed from two years ago. So when will it change? Is he going to get the players he needs? For the quality he wants to play football, I do not see him getting what he needs because we are not going to go and get world-class players we never do we may get someone who will become a quality player like we have done with modric like we did with berbatov like we did with bale and others you can name but when do spurs ever go out and buy a quality out and out player either of you? it's an impossible one to answer because we don't yeah. do it we go out Every and spend the five million on Richarlison. Or we go out Every and spend um, like 65 million on, on Dombele just because he had a pretty good season in France, in the French League. I, I, I just don't get it. All the big signings, we seem to do crap. And all the smaller signings, this we seem to do all right. 
it's I just don't get what's happening when we want to spend the big money. We always seem to have like the wrong answers. And when we don't want to spend the biggest money, we get better answers like getting Benton, Cork, Kuzewski, and then we get Richarlison. You know what I mean? I, t- I totally get it. You haven't always got to go for the hundred million pound players, yeah, because you don't know how that player is going to adapt or end up at your club, yeah. You can go and buy the best. You could have gone and bought Messi, and he might do shit in the Premiership. Who knows, yeah? But look what Arsenal did. Look what Liverpool did. Liverpool knew what was holding them back, so they went out and spent hundred, nearly hundred and fifty million on a quality defender who was already bloody good. Did we think he was going to get this good? Maybe not, but we knew he was quality already. And he went out and bought one of the best goalkeepers coming up in the system. We don't do that. So if we're not going to do that, and we're not going to go out and buy a Declan Rice, where are we going to go? But to be honest, buying a Declan Rice, it took our Theta four years or five years to get one of those players. I feel like it's not. It's going to take and two years or three years. I don't think Levy will give in that easily for a that I'm that no much my good. point is you can forget that bit it won't happen even if we went and finished second in the league and missed out by a point like Liverpool and got to a Champions League final we still ain't going to spend a hundred million on a player now Levy the bit I stick up for him on is he does actually spend money I mean if I remember right we're the fourth biggest spending club in five years only Chelsea Arsenal and Man U have spent more than us but a majority of the time we buy crap. And now I go to another point with Ange then, yeah? When he blatantly basically states that we will go for, Spurs go for quantity, not quality. Where are my hopes going to go? Yes, we need to build that squad, but we need some quality in there. Ellie saying it. We need quality for what we want to do. But if we're only going to go for quantity, what's even the bloody point? Because as long as we get fourth place, Levy and that are happy. He's still getting his three million bonus. Club's still getting its money. They're a business. They don't care. So if we're not going for the quality players, what are we expecting anyone to do? And that's half in defence of Ange. Clubs in shambles, really, actually, if you think about it. We we make all this money and now he wants to build a hotel. It's always there's always a different reason not to get the biggest players. Because now we've got the money, we've got all this stuff, and now he wants to build a, a new hotel. He wants to do this other thing. And every time there's another reason not to do it. You know what I mean? I totally agree. I mean, Daryl Denton, what he says here, as a club, we ask players to adapt to different managers and different styles before telling them (laughs) this club can't make the hard call. It can't. I mean, what we've done over the years is get different managers who play different ways. They get a couple of players that play that way, even though most of them have been crap. And then we go to another manager who wants different styles of players so he's left with a deadwood from the other side. I know this is going to take a season or two to work, but it's just repeating myself again and again. I just don't see how this system can work in the Premiership overall. The Premiership is too good to play like that game after game. Even against some of the minor teams, we've struggled against them because they've just sat back, waited, and... There you go. There's the chance. Take it. And we give them such a good chance that they usually score off it. Something has to change. But my man says he's not going to change. I know I keep repeating it, but he's doing my fucking head in. I just don't see where this can take us, this system. I really don't. I mean, the big clubs we've played. Yeah, we beat Liverpool. That was a pure bit of luck. And even then, it was the luck at the end that we managed to get the rebound off of there. But why did we get that? Because Ange actually changed a bit of his style. You blatantly see him call Kulu over and said, right, you, middle, Poro, down the side. Lumbio, Kulu gets the ball, puts it out wide to Poro, straight through, diversion, banging the goal. I really think we should play Poro more on the right wing too, like re on the side to get all those assists that Johnson does because he's really good at those. And you'll get nine out of ten on the, on the man. He'd score way more goals. Especially with how we stand. I think we would. Because he's our only one who can cross the ball regular. Right, Kev, what have you got to say here, mate? Everyone knows we need a DM, except Ange. But that's okay, because he's a cuddly bear, and we we have a song about him, and Robbie Williams is the fan. It's all right, mate, isn't it? 
It's all right, mate. <laughs> it's Ange is he's a good manager. You can see that. But until he wakes up and smells the coffee, that you just can't keep on doing this same thing against the fast teams. Nothing's going to change, and we're still going to even said it at the start. Yes, it's going to be a bumpy road. Yes, we're going to get beaten. Yes, we're going to win. And he said, give it to the next season. So fine. I will make my final judgment halfway or through next season. But at the moment, I can only judge on what I see. And what I judge on what I see at the moment, other teams are only going to get better. Chelsea are only going to get better. People who think they're just going to sit back and wait. No, they are going to get better. Man U will get better. Aston Villa, they've got the money. They will get better. Newcastle, if they didn't have as many injuries as they got. I mean, they had more injuries than us and Chelsea at one point. And their main goalkeeper's out. And their goalkeeper, I think he only had to make one fucking save today. So when they start getting better, if we don't adapt our style of play or we don't get the players in, we're going to be sitting in eighth place again. Ellie, Charlie, what do you think on that? I think you're completely right on that. I just, I don't really see how this is going to go. And what you're saying, I think, I think you're really doing it right. I think you're, 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 what you're saying here is completely right. So, when the others get better and we just stay in the same place that Spurs are, what do we do then? Be happy Nothing with that place again. Be happy with that place again. But I don't know, give Ange a bit more time when you can blatantly see it's his system that's part of the problem. Exactly. That's what well, I was saying on Tottenham away yesterday. Because everyone's everyone's improving. It's not only us. It's not like if we improve next year that we'll get uh, uh, we'll challenge the title. Because everyone is improving every year. Everyone's trying to get better every year. It's not as if we're the only ones. So saying, oh yeah, we'll challenge next year. I don't believe it because thinking about it, City's going to get better. Arsenal's going to get better. Liverpool's going to get better. United's going to get better. So who says we'll get top four? Or even top four, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, most of the clubs this season, even Man City, have been patchy as anything, especially compared to what they usually are. Arsenal went through the bit of the rough patch, but probably the best team in the Premiership here and now. Liverpool, they're doing it at the moment. They used to score for fun, but they can't seem to put it in the back of the net properly at the moment. Man U, they've just been Man U. Newcastle haven't been the team they were last season. Aston Villa, no, again... Boring. The only teams that are going to get better, are we going to be able to adapt to that? To that, I just don't see why Ange is not willing to change for a game. Or when we're only 3-0 down. I just don't... Oh, it's just repeating the same thing, but it's done my head in today because I've seen it a hundred times now. But I'm especially really scared with, like, the, not only the top fours uh, like, improving, like, the, the top eight, they've all got so much potential. So let's say they get three players, they'll be better than us in a heartbeat. All these teams can be so much better than us in a heartbeat if they just get the right players. So we can't just, you know what I mean? We can't just say, oh yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're improving this, that. The only ones that are really going to improve are the top four. Everyone's improving. Not even only, not even the top five, the top eight, the top ten. Every team is improving except maybe three teams. So that says even Fulham could be better next year if they get the right players. You know what I mean? There's nothing that says that we get top four guaranteed. We could even get 10th next year because everyone's found out our system and we're not playing the right game. That is another point I will go to, yeah? I mean, fine, we're doing better than pretty much everyone thought we would this year. I thought we'd get 7-6 sort of thing, yeah? But yeah. I felt that after the first 10 games, Postacoglu's style got found out because that's when teams started sitting back with us and just waiting. And most of them do the same thing. But we're now getting the problem that even teams playing the way we want them to play, like Fulham did, like Newcastle just did, we still go and get our asses kicked. So there's something not right. But loads of people keep saying, yes, give him time, give him time. Mate, he's got to be getting the picture already, but he just doesn't. To me, it just seems like ignorance is bliss. And at the moment, I'm just a bit lost with it now. Because, obviously, I want us to win something. I want us to do something. But if he just does not change, 
and every team has sussed out our style of play, I just don't see where we can change. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is because it is if you if you see how we play, it's pretty easy to understand how we play and how to counter it. So we just really need to have a plan B because otherwise I'm I'm scared for next year because if the next ten games don't go as well as they did last year, if those these ten games at the start didn't go as well, we would have been eighth or seventh. We're so lucky because now people have understood us. Now people know how we play and we get sort of caught out on way more things that didn't happen in the last first ten games. You know what I mean? So I really feel like we just need to play a bit different, like a bit different so that pe uh, teams next year get a bit shocked by us. Not that they think, oh, yeah, they're, they're going to play like this. Don't worry. We know what they're going to do. It's, oh, it's just frustrating. Very frustrating. Brian says he's going to jump on in a minute. Brian on Twitter is one of my five followers. Big up to mm -hmm. Ryan. Brian Daigle right. says he's going to jump on a minute when he gets indoors. So, Tech, what are you saying here, mate? Guys ever wonder why none of the big clubs never come <laughs> never come in back? I can't even read that. So, hang on a sec. Guys ever wonder why none of the big clubs That's are never it. coming in? I think he means to say why none of the big clubs are going to come, are kind of trying to sign Son. Yeah, right, got it. Yeah, my eyes just went funny there for a moment. None of the big clubs ever have gone to Son. And this is a question that I've heard one or two people ask for Son, yeah? If he's such a winner, like quality player, which he is, and we all know he is, why the hell has he stayed at Spurs? And I've got another guest here to come on. Dietrich, how are you doing, mate? I'm great. Good uh, Good morning on my side, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well. All right. We're all ears, mate. Your opinion on the game and the players? Go for uh, it. I'll be honest with you, Dan. You always watch after the third third goal. I stopped watching this shit. I told you guys, Ange is not a manager. He's a puppet. He's a joke. He will never change his ways. This is unacceptable. The performance that I saw today. And last season with Stellini, you saw the players and the defense we had. Mm -hmm. And look what we had today: a better goalkeeper, a better center back, a better fullback, and we still conceded four goals. It's unacceptable to play two inverted fullbacks, game in, game out, and leave that much space. And we don't play with the number six. It's not It's not the Japan League. It's not the fucking Scottish League. Get your group together, change your ways, or this is not going to fucking work. Mate, you've basically repeated what I've said. It's, it's yeah. true, and some people just aren't seeing it. And right, FG saying here quick. One second yeah, there, yeah, you're glad. Dan, you're saying Angel Dax. Give it a couple of months, that will change. I don't know whether you're being sarcastic or serious there, mate. Can I, he's, can I, he's had nine months to adapt a few things, and he's still making the same mistakes that he made in countless other games as well. Can I answer this comment? Go on, Dietrich. Go on. And when people say, oh, let's wait for the play, right players to come and give him time and shit, I swear to God, if you put uh, Cafu, Carlos, Maldini, and freaking uh, whoever, uh, let's say Puyol, we would still concede that many goals because this is like anyone you put at centre back, it's not possible to concede that many. That much space. Oh, go on, carry on. What were you saying? I'm saying like it's not possible to carry, not to uh, protect that much space. We are too open. But one ball over the top, and they're through. And it's the same every bloody game, isn't it? Yeah, and then... Every game. And then people, I remember still telling me that uh, on Tottenham away, oh, he always lets the the wingers, like, uh, he always tells the team attack us on the wing. But that doesn't work. That, like, it's not going to work going forward. Like, every time. We just beat the full back, put the ball in, and they have an easy tap in, or just put them through ball and they're going to uh, split them, uh, the two centre-backs. I mean, a lot of people are saying the way we play football is very fluid, yeah? I'm starting to think it's not. It's not fluid. I, I'm starting are you, to think it's seriously not because it's just the same thing time and time again. Are you whether it's in attack or defence. I'll be honest with you, um, Dan and the rest. I was entertained watching Newcastle play. This is the kind of football I want to see. A ball through and they're through on goal and they score. 
Look at us. We play pass, 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 and there's nothing that happens. I'm not entertained watching this shit anymore. I was more entertained when I saw Conte, and I was more entertained when I saw Mourinho. This is not entertaining football. Like, stop. People need to stop with this as the ball and, uh, being, and listening to the media. We need to change this ways, or I swear to God, it's going to get even worse against Arsenal next week. I, am not I see what you say, but that, saying mate. that Conte was more entertaining is no, not true. Because uh, if you think about it, every uh, like people didn't want to go to the game anymore because it was so much playing backwards. We would have a throw in at the corner pick at the other side, and it would be back at us. Nobody wanted to go to the games. The atmosphere okay. was crap in the same. You Nobody me, liked being there. You tell me you were not entertained when we won. Uh, uh, when we made the, the Champions League, we were one of the most entertaining team to watch. Well, in, in the Champions League, play for Europe. No, no, one that's we, for Europe. The, not in the Premier League. In the Premier League, we played horrible. It was no, fun. no, 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 no. What he's saying is, is when we got into fourth place, when Conte did the unthinkable, when which I took, think any manager would have. I, when I, I took, don't even think Pep would have been able to do it. Go on, go on, Dietrich. When he took over, when Nuno got sacked. We were so entertaining to watch. We were lethal. We were one of the best forwards. We were so defensively good. That was entertaining and to look watch. at the team he had. And this, uh, this is go on, Mike. Sorry. And last last and last and then you can go. That season he had the worst players and we were actually entertaining and we were lethal. Now Ange has better players, he has better everything, and he still finds a way to make me bore as fuck. And everyone said that 10 games it was entertaining. It wasn't. That's just a lie. Team were just not lethal and they were not good enough in the first 10 games. And we had a bit of luck. Yeah, a couple and of games we won so because much... we were good, but we had so much luck. I in guess we've been 3 0 down against Man U. Man U should have been 4 0 at halftime. They just couldn't yeah, fit the dinner. They just couldn't. But it put still it in the back was fun to watch. Then. No, it it's was not fun to watch. I'm sorry, brother. It's not fun to watch what I'm watching right now, but but no. Know? But I'm talking about the first. You're talking about the first ten games that they weren't fun to watch. That was amazing to watch. It no, was what? such a lift off from the last season that we got eighth place playing yeah. defensive. But that's why it was fun to watch because no, yeah, that is true. But we won. We actually football. won games and we were playing attacking football. That's why it was yeah. fun to watch the first ten games. But we but also not... had more luck than people realize. Exactly. I mean, the thing I keep saying with counter attacking football, they say it's old school. They say it's fossil and that. If you've got the right players to play counter-attacking football, it can be the best football out there. Look at when Chelsea went and done that league, conceded, what, 14, 15 goals, give or take a couple, and scored how many? I keep saying it. I'll go through it one more time for people. Conte style of ball. Okay, it's defensive. It can be boring. But if Conte would have had Jaguson, Romero, Van de Ven, with Doji, Poro. Poro how he is now. Because Poro, we got Poro, got Romero. Was yeah, Poro was shit when he got him and Pe- um, Romero was playing crap. But that's two players but there, yeah? I've just named that, the back five. I've just named the back five. Maybe because of the manager. Yeah. If you think no, about then, it, okay, if both see, players, if both players were playing so well now, but last season they were playing crap, that can't just be on the play. The man, maybe the manager did something wrong there because if Ange Postelou comes into a team, he's new, then they should be playing worse, right? Because they're playing talking- way better with a new manager instead of Conte where they were playing crap the whole season. We, we thought there would be Poro nothing. Had time to, Poro had time to settle down. He's had his time to settle down and get his act But that was completely right? different football. Out. Complete different football. How how Poro played was the same he played at Sporting. Being a win-back, doing all the same. Now he's playing different football and he's playing better than he was playing last I'm year. Sorry, and he's, he's got a new manager. Back. For um, one I... reason, his defending's got a bit better. Yeah, and I disagree. He I was playing he's... the same otherwise. I disagree. I don't even think he's been playing well lately. I don't think he's been one of our worst. He not hasn't been a one of our worst, but if we're talking about what he's good at, which is passing, I don't think his passing Getting has forward. been great. Getting forward, he hasn't been that good lately. He hasn't been doing many long balls either anymore, no. like he usually did on the other side of the pitch, from one no. side to the other side on the corner. He and hasn't that's... been doing them either, has he? And you see, uh, what's your name? I'm so sorry, I don't want to be disrespectful. What's your Charlie. name? Charlie, nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you, man. You were on I a just... sales jersey, right? No, I just yeah. think that's coaching. If you don't, it tells him like you cannot cross the ball. That's coaching. You cannot tell me otherwise. You mean that no. Poro can't cross the ball? No, no. I'm saying like Poro doesn't make any through balls. He doesn't go on the wing. I just 
drills in on the ground because he's one of our best crossers. That is coaching. He's, he's our old, best crosser. He is yeah. the best crosser we have at the club, and you ask him to play freaking midfield. Are we? Are we fucking? Are we, is it a joke or what? At the moment, it. At the moment, we look like it. And the other thing is, with us, we keep doing the same things, bottling it basically, where it's in the palm of our hands of where it goes now. And we throw. I mean, that game against Villa, brilliant. And then look what we go and do with Fulham. And then we get ourselves in a position again with a bit of luck that the other team didn't do too good. And then we screw it up again against look, a team where only half their main team was there. Look at look at Eddie Howe today. He never played the back three. He saw the weakness. Fulham exposed the blueprint how to beat Spurs. He changed yep. it to a back three. Why not do the same, Ange? Why not just tweak some stuff? Why not change the formation? Look at, look at Madison. Let's be fair. He hasn't been great. You ask yeah, him to he has had a better game this game. He, this was one of his best game in the last... Brother, he's not, he he's not playing as a number 10. I don't know what the hell he's been playing lately. We Do need you know his what? creativity and he hasn't done anything. Dietrich, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to agree with you there, mate, because he just hasn't been doing his thing. I know he's had his injury in that, but he's had plenty of plenty of time to come back from it now, and he's still not doing what we've got him there to do. Has he been told to do something different? Or he's been told it... he's been told he's... to do something different. You could tell. But that's what we said, right? Madison hasn't been playing good since the injury, so we need somebody who can compete with him because it feels like he's slacking off the last couple of... Th- couple Charlie, of, uh, he's, it's, it's not about slacking off. He's been asked to play a deeper role and when you see sometimes either Saar or whoever plays um, or either Ben Chikur, they play higher than him. He has to go on the number six, take the ball and just pass it around. That is coaching. That is not him. And here we have another guest. Hello, Brian. I won't ask how we're doing because I can imagine you're slightly pissed off the same way as the rest of us. Go for gold, mate. We're all ears. Listen, oh, uh, Brian. my brother. D- Dietrich, my brother. How are we doing, Giza? I'm um, good. Charlie, how are you? you good, mate? Um, everyone good, in the good, chat, good. I hope you're good. I hope you're well. Um, I'm not really going to even talk about the top because we don't need to talk about him. It's obvious we've done this. I want to start with this monologue I'm about to go on. I'm going to start with this limp, pathetic, excuse-making section of this fan base. I've been on streams. I was on them yesterday. Oh, don't worry. We're easily going to get fourth. We're going to batter them. Newcastle, we're injury decimated. We're going to batter them. We're going to do this. We're going to... How many times do we hear this? How many times is it the best time to play them? We spent so... I said this yesterday on the stream. We spent so much time concerned about the players that weren't playing. We showed a a total lack of respect to the players that were playing. And they tore us limb from goddamn limb. Forget the score score, 6-1-4-0. This game don't care what anyone says, is more embarrassing than the 6-1. Because when that t- when that lineup came up today, every single one of those 11, you would have thought, right, okay, that team can handle itself. That team can do something. There wasn't a week, whether you think Werner is weak or Johnson is weak or Bissouma is not been right, that 11 filled me with a million times more confidence than what we had last year. And last year, Newcastle had a full team out. And we, Mm -hmm. and they were decimated, absolutely decimated. There is no cohesion from the defence to midfield. There is nothing from the midfield to the attack. They don't speak to each other. They don't know what they're doing. They're out of position. And I put a tweet out just now going, do you know what? All the Spurs players, the management, and everyone associated with this football club Forget the fan base. I mean, everyone that is actually employed by Tottenham Hotspur, whether they got the plane, plane, bus, whatever they did to get up to Newcastle, they shouldn't have needed any motivation, any kind of pre-match talk. They should have had revenge, right the wrongs, to the fans. And what we got was the exact opposite. The players are an absolute disgrace. 
disgrace. And I'm just waiting to hear, we're tired. We move again. We come back stronger. We need to look in the mirror. It's inexcusable, although it's another excuse. And Postacoglu has to wake up. It's all well and good. And, Dan, do you know what? I've been saying... 100% on what this man just said, by the way. Defences win you Premier League. Exactly, exactly. Yes. And, Joe, you know what, Dan, I've been using what you've been saying quite recently, and it showed again today. We take more risks and are more experimental playing out from the back than anything we do up the top. How many times did it go to the bloody goalkeeper when you had three they, people they, coming towards you? These fans, the fan base as a whole, need to work out we're not as good as you think we are. I got into a major debate and row yesterday on YouTube saying I want Europa League. I don't want Champions League football. If we, football, if we get Champions League football, we won't spend on Champions League players. We do quantity over quality, but don't worry, we'll get to hear the champions get knocked out. Get we got we'll get spanked. Look what we did against a depleted Newcastle. We'll get spanked. And Come people, up against Real Madrid or Paris Saint Germain or Bayern Munich we'll or even get spanked. In and the Milan will tear us one, mate. mate a lot of teams will now because you cannot play like that. And as you were saying, Dan, when I was listening in my Uber, everyone's saying, oh, it's different this time. You have to forget the past and look forward because it's different this time. Do you know how many different this time I've heard? We go into this window. If any fan, whether you're Levy out, Levy in, Levy don't care, and you honestly say, this year I have full confidence that we buy genuine, genuine quality over quantity, then fair play to you for believing. Trust me when the window shuts. If he does do that, I'll be the first to come out and say, well done, Daniel, you did good. But when it goes tits up like it always does, every single person that has come for me, debated me, said to me, oh, wait till next time, wait till this window, this time, I will be coming for you with heat-seeking missiles and I will not miss. I I'm will not miss. Can I add something quickly? Go on, Dietrich, just brother. Do you know when you said um, defense wins you titles? Can I just give you a quick quote on uh, Eric Dyer, what he said about, about <laughs> Postecoglou? A quick quote. He said, interestingly, he really doesn't do any tactical work. What he does is every single dream, uh, training drill from Monday to Friday is drawn up to represent the way he wants us to play. So you tell me from Monday to Friday you're doing zero tactical work on how to beat your opposition. Dietrich, you know what I, you know what I said? Every time, isn't it? One quick thing. I just want to pick up on, on what Lily White Lane has said here. All about installing the, the way of play, yeah? Pep and Klopp didn't change at the beginning so their players could adapt to learn their system. Where I think we won't succeed is because we won't get the players we need. I can totally see what you're saying now, but Pep and Klopp would not have gone and played games against with a team like this playing like this against a team that plays like that they would have known to adapt one or two points at least or they would not have waited until they're three fucking nil down before they did something so mate i'll make you right on half of that and half of that no Dan, i just want to also add as well what, what we got to look at as well and i said it on we are tottenham tv this football club don't know how to address things we have had, able, listen, Spurs fans, the pundits, people that go on YouTube, people that act, uh, interact on Twitter or any social media platform, we have known for a very, 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 very long time our Achilles heel is set pieces. Our Achilles heel is set pieces. The one time it had been good was when Antonio Conte brought in the set piece coach and it started to bear fruit, especially attacking-wise. Mm -hmm. What do we do? Well, we sack him. Conte, we sack him, and then we go through this season again, and people are going, look at our set pieces, it's shambolic. And we put, and we put Mason off the girls. We, 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 we do this for ourselves. We need replacements of players. Let's spend shitloads of money on cheaper options, and then realise, oh my God, we're in a bit of a hole now, and then let's buy the, the real deal. I don't understand whether you think us people on YouTube are these couch managers or or come on here for clout or or think we know it all 
I'm sorry, but it's quite clear to see, and I think any Spurs fan can sit here and go, set piece is a real issue. Big time. We've conceded so many, so many set pieces every game since the Man City game, since they know what to do with Vicario. Yeah. Like we've conceded so much, and we need to protect Vicario in some way, and he has to be more he has to be more dominant. He can push people because he's a goal. And, and, and he needs to tell them then defend the goalkeeper because that is yeah. his weak spot, and we yeah. don't do it. And so, do, since, do you know what's crazy? Even like Stell, like he's one of the biggest he defends every manager every season. He even says what is Ange doing with the defence and the corners is unacceptable. But I, I'm exactly in the same box as that. I think what we're doing with the corners, since we've been found out about that Vicario isn't that strong, he's just being pushed around. He isn't coming out in the right times. And we're just conceding so much against no. New West Ham. It's his weakest game. spot. No, Again, no, every game spot. we concede a bloody set piece. It, it doesn't... It, see, it doesn't no. isn't, we can't do have you, that. No, do you know what's crazy? Do you know the corner, there's no offsides. Everyone knows that. What yeah. the hell are, are they six yards away from the goal? Yeah, Everyone exactly. six yards. Well, you've got to look at this not... as well. If, it, if, if Poro has a hamstring, if it is and we get revealed, that's four to six weeks out. That's him out of the filth. That's him out of Chelsea. And that's him out of, uh, 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 out of Liverpool. So these games coming up, and whether you think Poro's good defensively, some people dispute it. I think I love Poro. Dan, we've had this discussion many a time about right mm-hmm. when when Poro and Destiny are together, we look a lot better than we do when one of them are out, or heaven forbid, both of them are out. Now, going into the fil- those three games I've just said, with the possibility of Emerson Royale. Mate, I, I, I'm going to be serious because I, 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 I'm I not one of these fans that go, oh, yeah, we're going to win because they're injured or we're going to win because of this. I don't see us taking a single point out of our next three games. And all the fans that were going, oh, don't worry, top five's Champions League, top five's Champions League, they're saying for fifth. Well done. Well done. The ones that go, oh, don't worry, we're going to get Champions League because we've got a game in hand, forgetting there's a way at Chelsea where we've won two games away since 1990. But all of a sudden, we're going to win that one because they're in a mess. We play Chelsea so many times when they're in a mess, they just get the job done. We once again have gone on with this fan base thinking we're the, we're the cat that got the cream when we're not. We're not. And people need to wake up and stop living in cloud cuckoo land because all we do every single time is we get a brand new manager in and we repackage the same shit just for a different packaging and a different manager trying it a different way. So now we've got Ange doing it diplomatically and softly and, and, and adding mate and whatever. So, so it's all good. But, but you get Conte who shouts and screams. You get this one. You get that one. They all say the same stuff. They just repackage it and say it differently. And it, we get the, don't worry, That's it's another project. It's another project. We have to give them time. I wish our manager, I wish our owner gave our managers time because not one of them, not one of them have actually lived out their contract, apart from Potch, who actually got given a contract extension but didn't get to see it out. Not one manager has seen out his contract. So we've got him for four years. I expect him gone by the end of next season, maximum. Maximum. I think this summer is going to get sucked. Sacked or walk. Sacked or walk. Yeah. I mean, I don't think this summer. Here. Yeah, this summer. From England forever. Where did everyone expect Spurs to finish the end of the season? At the start of the season, I was looking around about seventh. But then when I see a couple of the players start playing, Van der Ven, Vicario, the Doji, the way Basuma was playing, the way Madison was playing, I was thinking we can get top four here. Now, again, top four, he's done a good job. But the thing that people need to see is that we are grilling him at the moment because of consistent mistakes he keeps making, the same mistakes. That is why the manager is getting grilled at the moment. So that was so quickly, you three, where did you think we would finish at the end of the season? Could I go last? So I thought because Kane left, you got a new manager, didn't have as many experienced players in the team, I thought we'd get 10th to eighth in that area. I didn't think we'd get Europe. I thought we'd do worse than we did with Conte. Okay, Dietrichs? 
Uh, I have two answers. You know my first answer. I didn't give a shit about where we finish as long as we took a cup seriously. Mm-hmm. But after seeing the team that... No, the players that for the first time in my lifetime I've seen Levy by. And the way we're playing at the start of the season and we had one game a, a week, I was thinking maybe top four. Easily top four. But I know it doesn't... I don't, but I don't care about top four. Are we talking about before the season started or once the season has started? Because when the season okay. starts, before we get top, okay. Oh. When the season started, I thought we could get top five, hundred percent, fifth or uh, fourth, fourth, third. I thought we could have gone in that area. But the next ten game, the next eight games, I don't even know if we're going to end in top four. I think we'll get sixth or something if we've got this team. And Emerson Real isn't good enough, and I think we should play Jackson instead of him because he's a bit more defensive, will be defensively more sturdy, and well, against you know, teams like Arsenal and all that stuff. But Charlie, but you know. You know, Damo, this manager will not play uh, Dragusin because he's he won't. stubborn. But he should. is actually quite good at covering the right back. He did it for Genoa a couple of times, from what I know of. And I yeah. don't think he can be any worse than Royale. No, I mean, listen, but where I'll say as well, when it comes to, I'm with DJs, but I said it on all the channels I went to. When it came to where I think we finished this season, I didn't give a prediction with the league. I couldn't give a flying monkeys. All I said is, I'll. My two key areas of measuring success was we ended the man- the season with the manager we started with and we took the cup competition seriously, which obviously we know how that works. But you're, you're talking about Dragusin and all that. Uh, another thing that, that really pissed me off with today is you look at that bench. It's been widely documented this week. We're prepared to listen to officers, officers of Brian Hill. We, we want him gone, a permanent deal. And then you got people like uh you got people like Donnelly who's been playing Dan, we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So why the hell Brian Hill, who's someone that we want out of the club, is getting on the bench, where someone who is the very heartbeat please god of our future doesn't get a look in. We did th- we do this all the time. And I've just seen um someone in the comments by the name of Dan Gaze. And if it's the Dan Gaze, I think it is, I hope your daughter. Is doing very, very well, my brother. Um, if it is the Dan, I think it is. But, but yeah, I mean, you look at it, that midfield was shambolic. The defence, listen, every single player hang their head in shame. Van der Ven was who I adore and normally won't have a bad word said about him. Today, whether it was the yellow card and he had to be careful. Um, but He that, still even saved our arse a couple of times, though. Yeah, but that listen, that, that front line, listen, we were... Harvey Barnes is a player I admire. I, I really like him. And I, I said a couple mm-hmm. of years ago on We Are Tottenham TV when we're looking at wingers, I wouldn't mind going for him. Gordon, as I was about to say to OCC, is someone we were obviously linked with but didn't go through because of the money. Um, Ezzy is one I'd love to go for. Their other uh, left winger, Alusi, mate, Alusin, I, whatever his you, name mate, is. I, I would take that Newcastle front three over Oz. And he, Isaac... Or Isaac, however you want to pronounce his name, is a very, very special player. Brian, who did I say I wanted two or three oh, months? Same here. Same here. This yep. is the this is the thing. If you look at it, if we want an out and out striker, there's your man. We go out and out and say Newcastle. For example, Newcastle. What do you want? Not Ivan Tony. You're in the last year of your contract, so we're going to sniff around like sharks because you're cheaper. You're like right. Who's young? Who is showing what they could? I would throw whatever Newcastle asked to Isaac. No questions asked. Isaac, bang. You're not in Europe. He is, and I would take that front three over ours right now any day of the week. But I've got to agree. I mean, I wouldn't say no to West Ham's front three over ours, except for I'd still have Son in the middle. I mean, that could does. <laughs> you know, I, I, there's a lot of... The problems are definitely up front on our wings, without a doubt. But I keep going back to it. This system, best defence on the planet, will still score, will still concede but a lot of goals. I know I know people focus on the wings, but I'm sorry, as much as I love Son, the striker position is a big problem because I don't think he's a striker. Yeah. He's not good enough to be a striker at Spurs. And people yeah. said, sell Kane, it doesn't matter. He doesn't want to be here, but now you look. We cannot let uh, we cannot rely on Son being a striker. And look what he what did he do today? Fuck all. He 
he, he he went shadow, didn't he? I mean, he didn't get much off the ball. I'll give him that. But again, captain material, not for me. What do you three reckon on that? Is is Son captain material? Go on, well, another thing. Sorry. Um, if you think about it, we have not been linked with a lot of strikers this this coming months. I'm pretty there scared. There aren't many strikers not... out there. I know, but still, we've been linked with every other uh, uh, position on the field except for a striker, really. So I'm a bit scared if we're actually going to get a striker. I don't know if... We... Because if you look at it, all these uh, reports coming out, it's all uh, central defensive midfielder, wingers, centre-backs, uh, left-backs. So There's never Tony a striker. And Jimenez, Charlie, but again... Yeah. But we're, we're not going to get Tony because he doesn't want to come to I don't to want Scotland. Tony. Yeah, I don't want Tony. And Jimenez, I don't want Jimenez because he's just been good for one season. Who says he'll do it in the Premier League? And it's the Eredivisie, which is not the best league in the world. It, it, like To say Jimenez will do anything in the Premier League, is, I, I just don't believe it. I'm not a fan of Jimenez. So to say we'll get an actual good striker this season, I think I don't even think we're going to get one. That's what I'm scared of. I'm scared we're only going to get good wingers. We're going to get Eze. We're going to get all this stuff. But we're not going to get a striker. And I'm really scared for that. I really am. So let me just go on to what you were saying about Sun Captain. I think he's brought some incredible things to, to, to what a captain is, but that's off the pitch stuff. Something that really annoyed me with Sun last uh, and showed me that with his captaincy is when he let Pierre Emil Hoybier take that free kick against Forrest last week. This is a guy that we see take free kicks week in, week out for career. Or sorry, I say we, you know what I mean, when they're away on international duty. And they mm -hmm. are, incre he's an incredible dead ball specialist. I would call him, a you see the style of the free kicks, top corner, around the wall, over the wall. But Pierre and Mulhoibier goes, I, I take this one, it's mine. And human son is like, oh, go on then. He needs to be stronger. He needs to be stronger. I think he can be a very good captain. I think he's done very good things as a captain. But I look at it right now, and like I keep going on with you, Dan, about Paulinia, we need a captain that will get on the pitch and go, right, this fight ain't bloody acceptable. Buck your ideas up. And literally, you look at the great captains of the Premier League, and I hate to mention some of them, Tony Adams would not settle for that. Patrick, Patrick Vieira, yeah. Roy Keane, John Terry, Rio Ferdinand, you can go on and on and on. Liverpool, Sammy Hippier, Stephen Gerrard. Even Michael Keown as a vice manager, yeah. a vice captain. And Mate, that. you go through it. They would not accept this. Company. Co Mate. Yeah. One of the very, very... They're t they're, they're t their captains. Pirello, Gattasso. Mate, you, you can goes go... On. The, mate, you look, Baresi, Maldini, you can go... These guys... Tony's are, too nice. He's this, just always too nice. He 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 needs. I mean, uh, look at uh, what's his name? I forgot his bloody name now. Uh, the one who's been at Bayern Munich the whole time. The one German called the White Wolf. Huh? Neuer. No, not Neuer. Philip Lamb. Neuer. Alonso. Oh, uh, no, no, no. The right back. The right back. Uh, what's no, 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 no. They're attacking midfield forward. He's been. He's back. Musiala. Muller. Oh, Muller. Mulder. That's it. Muller. Look at when Bayern Munich were doing poor. He went off his head on that pitch. Started screaming in Kane's face. Everybody on that. Like, that yeah. is what I think. But like on, I said, boy, I'm sorry to no, 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 I was about to say, like I said, the thing, for instance, first game of the season against Brentford, when we went over to the Brentford, the Spurs away fans for the huddle and everything, I thought that was Ange, but it was actually, Madison said, Sonny came. There's certain things Sonny has done, which are incredible. And he's he's done some things better than Harry Kane did, better than Hugo Lloris did, better than captains we've had up until Ledley King. Go back to Steve... Gary Mabbott, for me, is the most inspirational captain we will ever have. Not just because of what he was, but what he went through, what he put his body on. The... Inspiration. There are things human son has done as a captain, which I stand up and go, do you know what? That's brilliant. Absolutely. And he does seem to have taken the responsibility of it on the chin and done it. But his performances like today, where I want to see the Tony Adams in him, the, v the, the captains we mentioned where you go, this ain't good enough, this ain't good enough. Because I know he'll do his interview and he'll say, we need to learn from this. We'll look in the mirror. We'll come back stronger. We've let you down. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear this is unacceptable. We were poor today. I take this on the chin as captain. I am not going to stand for this. I, as a captain, demand better 
from these players. Will we get that from Son? I but, don't know. But look, but like I said, the, the things he's done that I think have been brilliant. But look, all the captains you named, the famous captains in the history of the game, they were mm. all midfielders and, and defenders. None Correct. of them are forwards. So a forward or cannot... Goalkeepers. Or goalkeepers. None of them can be a, a captain. And that's why even when I see Son is, is going to get the captaincy, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't okay with it. For me, the only captain we have at the moment is a Vicario. That is screaming and shouting at everyone. Yep. And the only other one who's got the sort of aggression to do it is Romero. Yeah, but he always gets a red card. <laughs> Mind you, no, he's done pretty good the past 10 games and that. He's, he seems to have got his head back together. But again, they're the only two in that team that I would put down as a captain. Benson Kaur, no, he's too quiet in that aspect. <laughs> Obviously, Basuma and Saar don't even come into it. Doji don't come into it, neither does Poro. I think the other one that would be a captain for the future is Van der Ven, but not now. We need yep. a captain now that can... I mean, I still look on football old school. We need a captain now that is more than willing to go up to that player who ain't pulled his finger out and slap him in the face and say, get your, get your act together. Yeah. Not someone to come on and give him a kiss on the cheek and say, now, now, better luck next time. And for me, Son is not captain material. Charlie? I think you're right on that. Son, I think he's a great player. He's got great energy, but mm -hmm. he isn't aggressive enough. It doesn't feel like he's... It doesn't feel like he's... Like, he's too nice to everybody. Like, if he, if he gets kicked, he'd just give him a kiss, say, sorry, come on, guys, <laughs> let's not fight. He's not the one that is going to be there fighting. If Let's say if Romero gets into a fight, Son's going to try to stop it. He's not going to join in the fight like like captains would do in, back in the days. I know that's, they wouldn't do that now. But, you know what I mean? The, the aggression's sort of there. I know that he loves the club, but he just isn't a captain that you want to have, like, in the moments that you need to be shouted at. Because he doesn't shout at people. He, he likes to talk with people in the games that you really need somebody that's going to be aggressive with you, that's going to be to the point, it's going to be... Come on, guys! Just just get work hard. Do this, do that. I don't think he does that. I think he's a bit more soft to them because I think he wants to keep their relationship good with everyone. And not, I, I love Son though. I think he's a great player, but Excellent I just think he, he just isn't like aggressive enough to be a captain. He just doesn't get to the point enough. And I feel like people love him too, but he's not really being listened to as much. As I mean, they. another thing as well about Son. Yeah, all right, he was having a poor game, but for me, he wasn't getting enough of the ball to do anything. What Terry White has just said here. I couldn't believe it when I saw it. Son getting subbed on 58 minutes when we needed to score goals. And he kept Brennan I, Johnson, who was terrible. That made no sense. I, listen, when Brennan Johnson, I have to just say very quickly, with Brennan Johnson, when we moved him up front, they showed a stat on our Canadian feed. I don't know if it's the same rights as what you were seeing in, in Sky or whatever, and they bring up the same stats at the same point. I think it spent 15 minutes playing as our number nine he touched the ball twice. One was to control the ball and one was a shot that I think went over. So as much as we can say, and I, I heard you mentioning, Dan, before about Haaland, about literally he can go 90 minutes without anything. And I heard, who was it? Uh, I think it was Gary Lindgren and Alan Shearer on their podcast saying, a striker, you, the runs they're making and whatever they're doing, you don't see it. as long, If they don't get the ball, they can't do anything. They, exactly. simply can't. they can make the runs, it's whether they find him, it's whether they can see it, it's what, then it's down to him. But when you put him as a nine, and in 15 minutes he's touched the ball twice. It says everything. Well, what, 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 what's he meant to do? He put in an incredible cross, an incredible cross at nil-nil that Timo Werner could have easily headed, but he decided... Or controlled to... at least. Exactly. He had... it, was a, it was a great cross. It was a phenomenal cross from Brennan. And he put it over. Yeah. And he put it away. So this is the thing. We're, it's very, very easy to go for these players that people may not like. But you cannot have a go at Brennan Johnson when two 15 minutes up front touches the ball twice. That's not Brennan Johnson's fault. That's not his fault. No, I agree. I mean, Son didn't see much of the ball. I mean, at one stage, I saw Son like, running back at right back. I was like, what the fuck are you doing now? I mean, I think what Kev G has just said here is just so, so yeah. true. Our fan base just doesn't demand enough. Mate, we are too accepting as Spurs fans as a whole. 
All I'm hearing on other pods, it's just one of them things. Bad day in the office. and will get it right. Blah, blah, blah. I'll make you 100% right. Too many people are just, too, as Spurs fans as a whole, where we are so used to mediocrity in general, people are too accepting. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not. Especially right. when Angie's meant to get it right. Does this does it against Fulham, then seems to get his subs right for the next two games, and then basically goes and does what he did against Fulham. This was exactly the same situation as Fulham, basically. Uh, so, he, go on, Dan, do you remember on the... I have two things to say. Do you remember on the Tottenham Away podcast, I got crucified to have for having high standards and unrealistic standards, for just saying, take the cup seriously, and we don't care about a position in the Premier League. That's mm-hmm. one. And number two, we have fan base that I know Brian is going to remember which podcast I'm talking about. That are saying, oh, uh, Levy is going to change this summer. <laughs> Before you judge him, he's going to change. Don't be negative. <laughs> People will never change, man. That's why I lost hope. I actually lost hope about this club. I know well, things Dietrich, will never change. <laughs> Dietrich, I was on a stream yesterday and I hear it and I'm sure, Dan, you hear it as well. That's the, that, I, that's I go the on streams and people go, you've got to forget the past and start looking at it now from the future. It's a different time. It's a different era. You can't we can change the past. Levy with, we can see with Levy, with Paratici, things are getting better. But I'm like, so you conveniently want to forget all the stats, facts and data we've got to go on and you say things have changed against with Paratici, which they have. Things were changing under Paul Mitchell. What happened? Even Paul Mitchell said, my dream job turned into a nightmare. Hitchin, Camoli, Baldini, where AVB was told by Baldini and Levy, we bring in the players, you coach them. But then move forward to Pochettino, when apparently that window we signed no one, Pochettino was offered players but said no. So why is it okay when AVB says no? He gets told we buy the players, you have no say, you just coach them. But then when Poch is saying no, no, we're going to listen. I've heard this all before. And when people go, forget it, it's a new time. Just imagine it was a new chairman and Paratici had just taken over and it was a new chairman. Would you be saying things were good? I was like, but it's not a new chairman. It's not a new chair, but things will be different this time. It's, I'm like, hello, I've been leaving out for 16 years. Do you know how many times I've heard it's going to be different this time? And the best one, this is Levy. Do you know how many people I've heard it's been Levy's last chance since he sacked Pochettino? And now when you hear Ange, mm-hmm. those same people are yeah. going, this is Ange's last, this is Levy's last chance. He's not a cat. He ain't got nine lives. <laughs> no, he seems to have about 24. Oh, mate. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like the fan base would never be be in the same boat for Levy out because there's always so many disparities. There's always different thoughts for everyone. So to get, say, Levy out, we could do all the protests we like. He will still stay in. He will still stay. He won't exactly. go. Exactly. You know? Charlie so we ain't going nowhere, mate. So just We've got just to do with what we've got. To, yeah, we, we've literally just got to do with what we've got. Thing. I mean, what's just been said here by uh, Dan Gaze? Yes, we lost today. And got bullied. I think bullied is an understatement. We got ripped a new one to the point that we walked off the pitch like John Wayne, for God's sake. We had our lunch money but, stolen. Exactly. Yeah, we, we were in America. We, we come, got bullied by an American. But if we if we come back and do the scum, do we forgive that performance? No. As I think the cracks in the are starting to show, Basuma, poor, Saar, lost, Madison, not the same after injury. You know what? That is the thing. We go and do Arsenal. This game gets forgotten about, and so does any other bad game we've played. Yes, it, for me, it will get forgotten about for about 90 minutes, but I don't forget about games like this because if we go and play in the next game like we just played this one, I will bring up the Newcastle game, I will bring up the Wolves game, I will bring up the Crystal pa- um, the Fulham game and everything else. But for 90 minutes, yeah, it would get forgotten. Of course, of course Dan, you, 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 you look at it um, and you would say, but then I'm like, well, if we've done that against the Filth, if we had picked these points up the two games away and home to Wolves, if we performed at Fulham, if we turned up at Newcastle, we wouldn't be worrying about are we finishing fourth or are we getting Champions League? It would be, we are, two wrongs don't make a right. And don't get me wrong, every season, the first thing I hope for is that we beat the filth. Being oh, the filth, 
being the filth makes whatever we have as a season a little bit more tolerable wherever we finish because we beat them. It's like West Ham beating us, basically. E- exactly, exactly. But it's like, just because that performance has been good, it gives me more reasons to be furious that we haven't turned up in the other ones. It's it's just it's just not on. It's just not on. They, 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 these players, if we, we... Well, I don't work at the moment because of my health issues. If we all had jobs, or people that do have jobs, and on some weeks you did really, really well, on some, some weeks or months you put in performances like Spurs have done against Fulham, Chelsea, this one against Newcastle, your employers will go, what the hell's going on? This is unacceptable. You're on a verbal warning, a written warning, or even get the bullet. But right. here it's okay at Tottenham because it's a new project and we have to give him time and he needs more windows and, and things are moving forward and we have more points now than we did this time last season. Wonderful. Wonderful. We have more points than we won last season. Do we get a trophy for that? No. Nope. And it's like, like I think he was final. Charlie, Charlie was don't remember he finished second. Charlie was saying as well, what these fans have to realise as well, and the club, is we were in our position now where we're going to really compete because we got the advantage with uh, financial fair play. All the other teams are strengthening as well. So when we sign those two players and everyone's like, oh, no one else signed anyone. We signed two people. Look at that. Wicked. I'm sorry. I didn't know we worked in a world where if Liverpool signed someone, we have to sign two or, or if Man City signed three, we have to sign. The reason the transfer window ex- exists is to make your team stronger, to do better. It's not, oh, no one else signed anyone, so we're the lucky ones. We should have taken advantage of it. We need to take advantage of it. This isn't a competition. It's, it's, it, it blows my mind, the stuff I hear. Literally blows my mind. It, it's just too accepting, isn't it? And then when we go to a point like we do today, like we do in so many games, and we might as well have that playing on the pitch. I think that's what it looked like today. That is a sick picture. Where did we go? <laughs> Where did you get I that? Mean, oh, I made it on uh, one of the other shows, on uh, right. one of the websites. Right. I'm absolutely knackered, people. I need to go and take my painkillers because my back and leg is absolutely killing me, and I've got a fucking headache from watching that game today. I'll start with you, Brian. Where do we find you, mate? Find me on Tottenham on tour. I'll be back doing Andrew Management, Johnny, and I'm going to make sure I'm well enough to do it because I am going to be, for the next few days, just consider me radioactive across <laughs> YouTube and social media because, you know what, I had a little lull during January where I went a bit quiet, mainly because my health concerns kicked in, but I was like, I said at the beginning of the window, I'm going to judge this solely on speed of players coming in. And fair play to the club. They brought two players in quick, not last minute slapdash. So I was a little bit, still always leave you out, people will know, but I, I relaxed it a little bit. But health concerns or not, I'm I've come out of my shell again the last few weeks, and I'm ready to launch a chaos grenade. Because I'm not tolerating this bullshit going over and over again. So you will find me on Tottenham on Tour. I'm going to try and do a bit more radioactive, uh, or sorry, a bit more pre-recorded stuff. But I am literally, enough is enough. The same shit is happening again. So you will see me on Tottenham on Tour. And if you don't like what I say, just simply don't watch. If you're, if you're scared of hearing some home truths, go listen to a channel that will tell you it's sunny outside. You know what? That's exactly how I see it, mate. If you don't like what I'm going to say, you don't have to agree with what someone says. Everyone's got their own opinion, yeah? And that's fine. Because all I ask people to do is get their point. But what you just find is just a lot of people don't even want to try and get the point. They want to play ignorance is bliss, and they don't even like it when you throw facts in their face. Yep. But thank, thanks for the comment, Kev. That's much appreciated. It's going to run through the last couple here. Has Spur? That was. I would have accepted. I wish it was pathetic, mate. I wish it a bit. <laughs> pathetic would have been that an upgrade. Below pathetic. And thanks to you, Scott, as well. And right, so Dietrichs, where do we find you? Um, here, there, and everywhere. I'm here and everywhere, or you can find me on Twitter on the at D, uh, Dietrich's Kane. 
my last thoughts. Uh, I'll, uh, please sack this manager before it's too late. And, t- and please take the fans with him. Because they're an absolute joke. Things will never change under this ownership. And I hope, uh, what's his name, Brian goes to London soon and creates chaos. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Tell me, don't tell me, Dietrich. Okay, yeah, and, and Charlie? Oh, yeah, and last thing, at least we have two Sorry. weeks of, two weeks of, what's it called, the, a two-week break from Spurs before Arsenal. Yeah, I am not looking forward to that game. And Charlie? Well, you can find me on Twitter, Charlie Spurs in 17. I I go there everywhere. Brian, one of my five followers, thank you so much for that. Big Always, for you. Always, geezer. And uh, I'm going to try to start a YouTube, and I'm going to, because I'm on these shows like more often the last couple of weeks, I've been on mm-hmm. like five or six. So I'm going to try some more YouTube things, hope I can get a couple of followers, and uh, I'm going to start some Instagram. So if you uh, follow them, I'll, uh, I'll put some videos up in the next couple of days. Oh, brilliant. And next one you come on here, I'll put the links on and everything. I just wasn't thinking ahead for any of that. No worries, no worries. So one last thing I've got to show to a few people is wake up and smell the coffee. The system is not working properly. So hope everybody has a good afternoon and good evening and that. I'm going to go take my meds because I'm in bloody pain. Brian, go for it, mate. And as always, Levy. Out. Come on, you spirit.